quorum. It's um, it's seven o'clock, so I will call the meeting to order. I want to let everyone know, although it may be obvious that the meeting has been recorded and it's being recorded on the phone too. So. And, and John, can I ask? There is a uh, sign-in sheet circulating, and if you'd sign in, that would be great, so that we know who's here. And if the board could identify themselves, that'd be great also. Okay. Should we just go around? Sally, you can start. I'm Sally Miller. I'm the coordinator. I'm not a, a member of the commission. Joe DiNatale. Uh, Charlie Kimball. John Spector. Larry Niles. Mika Seeley. Everyone here? Uh, and Julia Cook is on the phone. And Julia is on the phone. Is there anyone else on the phone? Courtney or? Michael? No. Okay. Okay, our agenda is up on the, on the wall. Um, all the documents that we're going to refer to are available on the EDC website. Um, for, for downloading if you want to get them, if you haven't already gotten them. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Okay, any none? Okay, citizen comments. Yes, but and the agenda is going to continue to stay up on the screen, so if you don't have a copy, you can take it, but if you don't have a copy, you'll be able to follow along. Um, uh, for citizen comments, we're going to have, we know that, that, you know, I'm sure a number of people would like to discuss the bump outs, and so we're going to have citizen comments then also, and perhaps at a few other places as well. So if you have comments about the bump outs in particular, if you don't mind holding them off, and then we'll give everyone a chance to speak uh, during that time. But are there any uh, citizen comments on any other issues that people would like to, like to make? Okay. No, going on, yeah? Just a comment on the... Um Composition of the EDC. How do you, how do you figure out who gets on the board and who's not on the board? The select board appoints members of the EDC. We currently have one vacancy. People apply and they go to the select board. Yeah. People okay. apply and there is one vacancy currently. And um, Michael Michael Malik and Courtney Lowe are the two other members. Michael and Courtney. For those that don't know them, we just introduced ourselves. So. Okay. Any any. Last comments? Okay, hearing none. Um, could, uh, we need a motion to approve the minutes from the July 1st meeting. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Any discussion or comments about the minutes? My stylistic. <coughs> <laughs> Noted. Uh, okay. Uh, it's been moved. No further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Minutes are approved. <coughs> Just reminding you that if it's not unanimous, you have to take it by roll call if you have somebody on the phone. Right, okay. So, Julia, are you in favor of the, are you in favor of the motion to approve the minutes? She I am, yes. Okay, thank you, so. Does everyone understand that rule that if, when there's remote meetings, if it's not unanimous, then we have to take a roll call vote. If it is unanimous, then we can just do what we just did. Okay, grant reporting. So, um, some people, championed, and championed by Joe, have been pushing to have us uh, follow up on grants. And meaning that we gave money to somebody last year, what happened? And so we've not, we've, we've wanted to do this, we haven't done it up until now, uh, officially, and we're now gonna do it, and this is sort of a pilot test or a guinea pig. Uh, and Alita, we, we gave a grant last year to Pentangle, or two years ago, to Pentangle, uh, and we're now going to conduct the first follow-up. It's pretty brief, and uh, Alita's going to give a quick presentation. We'll have a chance to ask questions, and then we'll talk about whether we take this process further forward. Where would you like me to be? Uh, maybe t at the end, so you can talk to both us and the people in the room. Is that okay? Sure. Sort of like by the podium, sort of a. Oh, or you could stand at the podium. Yeah, right. Nice. Or on it. Okay, so I've got my wrong glasses for this, so I'm going to read for my. Um, so thank you to the EDC. Um, you have supported us in the past and are supporting us in the present, and we appreciate that. Um, in 2015, actually, I think that's wrong. It should be 2015. We received an anonymous grant of $35,000 to scope out the code and cost of a renovation of the Town Hall Theater. And with that, um, there was an indication of support for a lead gift should we proceed with a capital campaign. 
Based on that commitment, Pentangle applied to the EDC for a $25,000 uh, feasibility study that was approved on July 18, 2017. The purpose of the grant was to hire a consultant to do a study, to a feasibility study for a capital campaign and write a compelling uh, case statement. In September 2017, Alan Cantor Consulting was hired. Uh, just so you understand what that feasibility study was, it was basically interviews with 25 people um, that were known to Pentangle to see if there was an appetite and interest in supporting a capital campaign. Can I just comment briefly? These four questions then were given to Pentangle by us as a test uh, to see, you know, to basically try to help us assess what can we learn from having made this grant? Would we make it again and so forth? And so these are the four questions we're considering asking every grantee at some point afterwards. So, okay. And so were the grant funds spent in the manner in which they were intended? Yes. Were the outcomes described in the original grant request achieved? Were there any areas in which the results exceeded or fell short of the expectations? The outcome, gaining a clear understanding of whether we'd be able to raise enough private funds to renovate the town hall was achieved. Unfortunately, the answer to the question was essentially no. We did not have the capacity to raise the funds. And then we have three, the metrics, which you can read. Do we have any metrics that can help quantify the impact of the grant? The main impact of the grant was to avoid an enormous amount of effort that at best would have been wasted and at worst would have led to dissatisfied donors and patrons and disappointment among the community whose expectations would not have been met. Have the outcomes of the grant led to a reduction in the need of future funding? Absolutely. What we learned about Pentangle's fundraising capacity will help us guide us for the foreseeable future. We will no longer come back to you um, to help study our fundraising capacity. And I'd be happy to take questions. Thank Maybe you. first from the EDC and then there's any other questions. Any? Any questions about? Mm -hmm. Okay, Mom. Hmm? Joe, are you? No, no I'm okay. just responding to uh, a comment from the audience. Okay, are, are there any questions of Pentangle? I just try. I know the board was disappointed that the result wasn't yes. Uh, and how far short did the study come back and say, well, we think we could raise a million, not the $2 million that's needed? We did not get a actual number. Um, I think what we learned from it was there was confusion about Pentangle being a tenant in the town hall and the responsibility of the town to actually deal with some of the uh, ADA compliant issues. Um, there was also, if anybody, those of us have lived here a long time, Pentangle had some ups and downs. There was some concern about, you know, what if I were to leave? Um, would we have consistent leadership? Um, but it, it more was that the donors, and sadly some of them already passed away, didn't have the capacity, enough of them didn't have the capacity to give enough to give a lead gift. Um, but I will say it was a learning experience to explain to folks what it is like to rent, to be a tenant in a municipal building. And there's a lot of people that don't, don't get that. So I think to the good, they now understand. Um, we are tenants, we are stewards of the town hall, we do pay a certain amount of money for the upkeep and for all of the cleaning. Um, but a lot of people don't understand it. So. I mean, is, is there is there any sense that there may be a, an attempt in the future to, to kind of resuscitate this uh, project? So in the short term, we are dealing with upgrading. We had a matching grant from Dorothy Byrne to upgrade our, uh, which we've met, to mm -hmm. upgrade our all of our technological stuff, our lighting, our sound, that are sort of stuff we could take if the burning, you know, the building <coughs> burned down. Um, I think once we know some of the structural issues in the building, um, we need to know the health of the building before Pentangle would actually think about dealing with some serious interior so the, the, uh, the $25,000 was spent, I mean, it can't be applicable to anything in the future, is that correct? It can't be applied to anything you might Well, what the $25,000 gave us um, is a really good sense of what it will cost where we get to a point of renovating 
the theater. We know we know what the cost of taking the seats out. We know what the cost is if we were to put on a rear addition with a new HVAC system. You would you would take that obviously with inflation. Um, but so that twenty five thousand dollars helped to learn what that process would exactly. be. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Julia, trying to say anything? Oh, Julia, are you coughing or raising your hand? Oh, no, no, no nothing. Not I'm not saying anything. Sorry. Just a point of information. Um, when a grant, okay, no when a grant like this is made and a consultant is hired to do the actual the actual work, um, does that does that product the consulting product? Is that proprietary to the organization that did it, or is that something that's shared publicly? We shared the, f the report with the EDC at the time it was given to us. Okay, so could I just suggest that whenever, I, I think this is definitely the right road to be going down. Mm -hmm. um, can I suggest that, that there are other organizations that might be trying to raise money who could learn from this, and it's also just good stewardship of, of the grant, that this is the outcome this is why, and it's a perfectly reasonable, you know, you're quite right. You spent $25,000 to learn that it's not going to do you good to spend the tremendous amount of effort and money to raise it, and as you say, disappoint people. So it's a wise investment, so people should know how that investment played out. And we have in subsequent reports, I mean, for example, the Du Bois, <coughs> du Bois and King uh, report is published. And um, the housing study was published, and so, so I think this might actually be might have gotten less distribution. But it's a, we should adopt as a pro, as a as a principle that we will always do that. I agree. And ours is three years old. Yeah, but still, right. some of the concept. Thank you, Roger. Yeah. <coughs> okay, other comments, John. Yeah, quickly. The uh, Alita has the uh, the other money that said if you go forward, there was a there was a promise of more money. Has that expired, or is that still open? Uh, going back to the beginning. Yeah. Oh no, no. So, so just to clarify, um, we thought we had we got we got a grant to do the first uh, cost estimator report, um, and then we had an individual donor who funded that and said, "Yes, we would be the lead gift," and then that did not happen because that individual decided to do other things. Oh, I see. Thank you. Okay, last comments? Mm -hmm. Okay, I have now a process question before we move on, the second part of the agenda of this, uh, which is the process for reviewing grants. So um, I guess I would ask two questions. We can discuss either one. Mm -hmm. First of all, should we extend this process, do just what we did now for other grants? And I, what I've done, is, is put up here, these are all the grants that we've given from 2016 to 2019. I think there are 49 of them. And I've highlighted the next three biggest ones. Or sorry, the three biggest, well, Pen yeah, Pentagon was smaller than this, so the three biggest ones. Mm -hmm. On the idea that, you know, we can't take 10 minutes to talk about 49 grants. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start working our way through it. I'm not sure we need, in my opinion, I'm not sure we need to get down to you know, there's a $700 grant somewhere in there, or a $1,300 grant, but let's at least start with the big ones, which would be the Optimist Center, the community website, which is an EDC project, and the Rainbow Play School, and ask them the same three questions, four questions, excuse me, and have them come and appear, take five minutes, or a short period of time, and have them do that. Or any other process we want to have, or do we not want to do it? It's just we've been talking about it for a long time, so. I, I, well, I, I don't know about going back to all of those, but I think from going forward, every one of them should have that. It can be in writing. We can uh, make it available to the public, and if people want to discuss it at a public meeting, that's fine. But I think that's a way we should tie up each, right. each grant. I, I would support that. Maybe, maybe it's on a scheduled timeline based on when the grant is given and right. time, whether it's a year, depending on what. No, John, I think this should be part of our protocol with, with every grant proposal. I just want to clarify. Do you, you said it, so. You, you're suggesting that we give the, those questions and, and and get responses in writing, or we have it in person, or we have the option of doing it in person. What what would you? Those are, I guess, the three choices. <coughs> I think personally, I think in person is great. I mean, you yeah. know, hearing from Alita exactly how it worked is is helpful. It yeah. allows the opportunity for people to ask questions as yes. needed. I totally agree with that. 
it should be in person, I would think. Just, just to have some communication and, and dialogue and uh, questions that may pop up that uh, probably won't be articulated in some kind of written report. We, um, we do get monthly updates on the community website uh, as an example. Oh yeah, no, no, I, of, the, of those, these three, we get very regular information, but it would be good, I think even on that one, just because it's so big, to say, you know, look, let's look back over the last three years and, you know, and, and kind of step back and, I, I just don't want to exempt community website because it's our project, I guess yeah, is really what it no, is. No, yeah. I think we're holding them to a pretty good standard. Absolutely, well, I agree. Well, the other thing is that we don't, oh yes, one second, we don't have to, um, make a final decision, we could try these next three yep. and then have the discussion again, and did it work? And, you know, maybe we were just lucky this time. That it, so so sh would, would we agree to proceed with these next three? I agree. Absolutely. <coughs> yep. okay. Yes. All right, good. I'm sorry. Yes, the gentleman. Um, can you I say your name? My name is Jeff Zayas. Um, I don't think that you should grant any money without any accountability, which means people should be required to account for the spending. And I think with the last yeah, it's always great if they're we'll do that with every grant. If they're not going to do that, then you should not hand out any money at all. We Sorry, just, we just said. Yeah, so we, I think we have two. I didn't emphasize that. I think we have two proposals. One is that going forward, we will ask these. We will require grantees to answer these four questions. Now, going back, I, I, we might be able to learn something by looking at some of these in the past. In any event, so. Excuse yeah. To clarify, you mean in writing. Well, it, I, I don't know, it's hard in the digital age to define what just happened, but because she wrote the words, but we put them up on the screen and she's here talking about it. So I'm a, what I'm proposing, what I think we've just agreed to, at least for the next step, is to, to ask these three prior grantees to come and do just what Alita did. And also for every grant that we give going forward to require them, either in writing or in person, to answer those four questions. And we'll have to see whether it's in writing or in person. Should definitely be in person. Uh, well, that, that, that seems to be our sense. I mean, I think there's a there's possibly a limit to how much time we have, but well, I think you're handing out money you didn't earn, so they, you know they probably should come and account for that money. So yeah, no, they I would account in, for it. In just can I ask? I do believe that we have had a policy over the years where people have reported out. It's just that we didn't necessarily make those reports <coughs> public. One, or you know, we didn't we didn't do it like this. Right. One and two, you know, there may have been times as we've been growing and learning as humans do. There may have been times when perhaps not all of them were followed up with, right. um, as we are growing, growing and learning as humans do. <coughs> all right. Well, I think it's. I think. Yeah. It, I would also. <coughs> go ahead, Julia. Can I just chime in to say that I, I would also add that I think that the quality of information that you can get when we can ask questions will stand to, um, versus when we're asking people to um, answer something in writing, um, I, th I think we'll get more information that will help us improve moving forward to Mika's point about um, learning and growing. Okay, so, at least for, so the next step is to A, require of all future grants this same process, and B, to, to reach back at least as a start with the three largest remaining grants and ask them to do the same thing. Could we, could we send a questionnaire to all the others since we have so many we have to go back to to make to kind of at least get something is ask them to answer some questions and get writing. writing. Sure. I think that that's would a good probably idea. require us to cross-reference who has already answered those questions. Yeah. I think a fair amount of people have <coughs> already reported right. back to us yeah. you know and maybe, I just maybe. I do want to make sure that I'm saying that out loud it's not as if right. we've just been handing out yeah. money willy-nilly and haven't asked anybody to report back. We right. have asked people to report back for sure. Yeah. And we have received a report back from a lot of people. Just okay. Perhaps Maybe just under saying those that we really have no information on. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's, let's basically then compile a list. Here's where we've gotten feedback. Here's where we haven't gotten feedback. Uh, and where we haven't, we'll send out in a request for in writing for past ones. Mm -hmm. And we'll ask these three. If, I don't think we've gotten feedback from we get regular we've feedback from the website. We have feedback from the Optimus Center. I will say we've received we at least one, if not two, in-person stand-up. Oh, okay. This I is how it that. worked. Kind of, uh, yeah. kind okay. of presentations. But yeah. since then, he has now moved. Right. So now there's a new owner. I'm not sure really even if that is actually if if that right. has quite the same value as it would have before. Right. I didn't um, realize that we had already received it because it was prior to my yeah. mine coming. Yeah. Okay, last comment, and then we'll. Do you, need, do you even need comments from the Optimist Center since it wasn't a grant? It was, you know, like a free loan. Well, it was it was a grant, right? 
if it was a grant. If they have reported back to us already, I would say we don't need. Right. The Optimus Center has reported back actually more than once. Okay. And also, it, it was a grant. Okay. So then we wouldn't. So then we would not ask them again to do it. But for Rainbow Place School, okay. Well, I'm maybe. Yeah. Uh, Rainbow Place School. Rainbow Play School for sure, right, is one. And I think the community mm -hmm. website, we should, uh, I think it would be worth just putting it through <coughs> those same four questions, because we don't precisely get those questions each month. Um, we have a lot of feedback from the community website, but it would be I worth did, just doing it. So. Okay, okay. all right, any, are we in agreement here, I think? Okay, all right, let's move on. Um, discussion of the bump outs, okay. Um, now, I know that there's, uh, I mean, I assume, since this is unusually high attendance, which is fantastic, it's great, you know, we've, we've wanted people to attend, and it's, it's wonderful that you're all here. Um, and I know, you, therefore, I'm assuming that some of you are very anxious to say some things, and we're going to give you a chance to do that. I'd just like to take a, a three or four minutes at most, it may take five, and just share some, just frame the discussion, share some basic information to make sure that everyone has the same basic information. Um, I hope this doesn't come across as defensive. It's really sharing, sharing information, because I think that there's some important issues that we've learned and that you're all going to likely raise. So let me just do that, and I'll call Joe on you to add some things, and then we'll turn it over to you, and we'll take comments from, from the community. So w we got to this bump out by holding a whole series of public meetings, going back to uh, basically about a year. Um, four pu main public meetings, starting with, with a kind of an afternoon where you could come and talk to the consultants. There was a meeting of the merchants. Um, there was a major meeting here uh, in March that was presented by Du, du Bois and King. And, um, and then there was a follow-up meeting that was requested and promised at that meeting where a group of people came to review and choose the pots and the benches and so forth. There were regular updates to the trustees uh, and the regular updates to the select board who are the ones who officially approve the you know, all of the grants that we made. Um, we've, we're, li we're definitely listening to the feedback, and it is decidedly mixed, and it ranges from the very negative. The, um, and now, um, I have a copy, for those of you that would like it, it's also on our website, of all of the comments that were posted on the EDC website. There were 25 people who took the time. We have a new capability now on any topic. You can come to the website, it's really easy. You just fill out a form and you just make your comments and it, gets, and it gets distributed. And we had 25 people that did that just over the last week, which is great. And I have a printout, if you'd like it after the meeting, or it's on the site, of all of those comments. I'm gonna summarize them here. I think you can get the gist of it. Here are the very negative ones. The pots create visual chaos, look extremely tacky. We are, I think this is the pots, not us, are doomed for destruction, <laughs> an accident waiting to happen. Um, some more kind of moderated, but clearly negative. The money could have been better spent. A number of people said that. Uh, they blocked the sight line of drivers when there are kids in the crosswalk. Um, the positive comments. I fully support the bump outs. I'm a father of two young children. I was so happy to see them, it, which is sort of, you know, again, it shows how different people with the same, you know, interests about protecting kids can have different points of view about this. The plantings look really nice. It does make one more aware. Let's hope they can be permanent. And then the very positive, absolutely beautiful, spectacular, I feel safer, they are effective, many more cars are stopping, they're also beautiful. So it's a really wide range of feedback, it's a pretty small sample, half the people at the EDC website thought it made positive comments, half made negative comments, it was one that we couldn't classify. Um, I think some of the other feedback, I have it didn't tabulate it, but when I went onto the Facebook page at the Vermont Standard, it was more negatively tilted than this. It wasn't 100% negative, but so, so um, you know, and, and uh, David Green reported, uh, he told us that he thought it was 40, 60, 40% positive, 60% negative. So, uh, yes, go I just have a quick question. Sure. It seemed like when I came into town the first time, they were in the road. And right, I mean, now they're not. We're gonna, Joe's okay. gonna address that in a minute. Good. I, I don't want to take, I want to yeah, give no. you all a chance to talk about yep. it. So let me just get through, but yeah, it's a good question. Uh, just a quick plug, thank you to the 25 people for using the new website. This is the top half of the new website. It's just, and you can see citizen comments right on the top. You just click on that and submit a form. So going forward, if you can't make the meeting or, you can, or some of the other meetings that we have, please submit your comments. We take them seriously. What's the web address? <laughs> Well, just go to the town, townofwoodstock.org, and, and at the top, you can go to, uh, you know, boards, and there's a link to the EDC, and it takes you right to our whole site. 
So, so where do we go from here? And that's really, I'm gonna ask Joe to sort of talk about what's next and then open it up for your, for your comments. Joe? Yeah, um, first of all, can we have a list of uh, meetings that were available? Sorry, this is, I gotta go through each one now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, there were some meetings prior to that. Um, there was a couple that uh, uh, Nika conducted um, in town where the public was invited to meet uh, Dubois and King and um, give their input as to what they wanted Dubois and King to do. So as a result of that, we went forward uh, with hiring or asking them to uh, formulate their report, and they did. And what we did from then on <coughs> was based on the report that was submitted by Dubois and King. Um, going forward from here on, uh, there has been, um, as we all know, some considerable discussions, and, uh, and John kind of pointed them out. Um, the pots are right now off the road, and they're on the sides, uh, either in the park or uh, on sidewalks. And we have, we plan to uh, submit a plan to the select board to, uh, to put them in places that will not be on the road. Um, and then we're going to wait for their approval or not. So that's <coughs> what we're going to do going forward. I'm assuming, well I hope, that most of you folks attended these meetings up here. And if you didn't, what I, I'm assuming is that what we're going to engage in now is more of an informal or um, informative meeting as to who did what, where, when, why was what this, uh, decided and who decided it. So I'll open that up to you folks. You can start asking questions. Now, you want to explain first, especially for this question, why they were taken off the road? Everyone may not know that. Okay. They were taken off the road because uh, the Department of Transportation informed the town that they weren't supposed to be on the travel part of the road. Now, um, I have a call right now into the Bois and King because we did that based on their report. Mm -hmm. um, and to be quite frank, the EDC didn't make those placements, placements on the road. I walked with the chief of police prior to us getting all the material we needed to assemble these spots and asked them where they should be. <coughs> and he said, put one here, put one there, put one here, put one there. And then, when we finally received all the material on the Thursday morning, putting things together, the chief was with us. And he went around and said, put one there, put one there, put one there, put one there. And that's what we put in there. Um, apparently, it wasn't, yes? Um, but am I to understand that the recommendation came from the consultants? The initial one, yes. A and there was no follow-up? I mean, we all know when you do certain events or something, you've got to make sure you have the right insurance. Well, we, there we did, nobody we did, if you ask if we, we caught talk to the Department of Transportation, so yeah. no, no, we did not. Nor did the consultants. We, we, we went by the, the recommendations of the consultant. Now, their recommendation was based on other towns that have done this and was successful. <coughs> Vermont towns. Vermont towns, yeah, correct. And so we said fine, we went with that recommendation. We're still, we're following up, right, with Du Bois and King. Yes. To try to yeah. close that gap and right. we I've, haven't. I've got a call into uh, Sophie Sawyer, who's the woman that we work with directly, and uh, she's not available right now, I think she's on vacation. But I did speak with her partner on that team and he, he made an implication to me that, um, and it was a short conversation because I caught it just before he was going into another meeting. And he made uh, an implication to me that, um, to the best of his knowledge, since Route 4, part of it 
is, that goes through the village is maintained by the village. It steps into a different cla a category. And I said, fine. I said, as soon as Sophie gets back, let's elaborate on that part and get back to me. And she hasn't gotten back yet. But as soon as she does, then we'll follow up on it. Yeah. So a series of quick questions. Um, was this to be a trial? To, to begin? Absolutely. Okay. Right from so the beginning, it was supposed to be a pilot project. If it was a trial, how come we didn't try it on two sidewalks, like the sidewalk in front of Montvert and the sidewalk in front of the pharmacy, instead of you know, putting 80 pots out? And then question number two is, is it true that this project costs $17,000? And question number three is, what did we pay the consulting firm uh, for their time? And then I'll wait for my fourth question. Okay. The first question was, why did we, why did we do 80 pots instead of two or six? Because that was recommended to in the, in, in the, in the uh, report. And when I went around with the chief, he identified where the pots should go right from the beginning. Okay. Point one. What was your second question? Did it cost sixteen? Yes, it did cost seventeen thousand. Sixteen, actually, sixteen something. Um, yeah, it was sixteen and change. We're not exactly. How much did we pay Dubois and King? Twenty-six thousand. Mm -hmm. So, um, our my last question is: um, Do you plan to sue Dubois and King for their incompetence and negligent information? I don't know if they were incompetent yet. We we haven't had that discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Then what? We'll I'd like to approach this from a positive standpoint. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Roger. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I think this is a learning experience. Up to now, uh, from what I can tell on the website, the EDC has allocated something like $640,000. Right. Of that, 40% has gone directly to consultants. Mm -hmm. Include website consultant, um, visioning consultant, so on and so forth. So. Getting back to the discussion about metrics and reporting, from my perspective, n nobody anywhere in the world ever gets, gives a grant without requiring a written report. That report is based on, just as Alita just did, is based on these are the metrics that we consider, these are the goals, or not even the metrics, because not everything is metricable, these are the goals of why we spent $80,000 on the website. These are the goals of why we spent $25,000 on a consultant to tell, talk to us about revitalization. So you've got a good grant request form on the website that kind of does that. I would suggest that part of that form is these are the things you're going to have to report on and that everybody has to report on it. Did you meet the goal of revitalizing the town? Was, was it a good idea to spend $16,000 on a test rather than, as you said, two or three pots? Um, you know, I'm gonna get back to my personal bugaboo here, which is you just voted to spend $25,000 to do TV commercials According to the website, you previously spent $7,500 to do TV commercials. Did anybody go look at the output outcome from that campaign before you made these decisions? I think this entire board needs to get a lot more evidence-based in its approach and a lot more outcomes-based in its approach because personally, I think it would be a pity if there's too many more things where people can say this is not working, let's throw it into the general funds. Because I think it's critical for this town to have a flexible development pot of money. But with the best will in the world, and I don't think anybody's to blame here, except maybe the consultant, um, people are going to start saying, well, let's just throw this into sidewalks. Let's just put it into the town budget. So, and personally, I think that would be a real pity because then you don't get a co-housing situation. You don't get, and things will fail. That's, that's a given, but people need to see that there's due diligence being done and that there's structures in place to make sure that due diligence is systematically undertaken. Yeah. Very good points. I couldn't agree with you more. And I, and I, I, and I should emphasize maybe, um, <coughs> Maybe we might be a little bit late about this. And we might be a little bit late with this, with what I'm about to say. But 
this is a new experience for all of us. It always has been right from day one. This, the EDC and what do we do and how do we structure ourselves and how can we do the best thing for the town. Because I, I think it's important to remember that every member here on this board are volunteers. Except for Sally, of course, she gets well paid. But, it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us are volunteers. And in, in, in our hearts, what we want is the best thing for the community. That's why, so, that's why Charlie put so much work into establishing EDC in the first place and getting 1% option tax passed. He worked a long time and very hard at getting that done. But the goal was, what can we do for the town? What can we, how can we better serve this town? And that's what we do. Now, all along, it's been a learning process for us. One of the things that happened tonight is the result of that learning process. Having a leader come up, explain what happened to that $25,000, agreeing that that's what's going to happen moving forward, is a learning process. Now, maybe we should have just put up five or six bucks <coughs> initially. But the police chief said, put them here, put them here, put them here, put them here. That's what we did. Now, in a few. And it was a pilot project. What we're going to do now is look at it again, make adjustments, and do what we can to make it right. The, the, the benches were a pilot project. You said, apparently, I don't think they're anybody university of good faith yes. thinks that you aren't, that, that the EDC and the town boards and everybody else aren't Drops. doing the best, they, the, aren't, aren't of goodwill. And, you know, I think, like you say, it's a learning process. It is. But learning processes mean we need to learn and we need to correct and we need to do it quickly because, again, I think there's a danger that people are going to say this is not, a, this is not the way we should be spending our money. Well, I think people are, just to be clear, and that was one of the quotes I put up, people are already saying that. Right. And, so, and I mean, that, would be, that would be a tragedy. So let's learn from that I think and it's make it obvious that we're addressing it. Let me see if someone else who hasn't said it enough. Yeah, go ahead. No. My concern is I attended, I believe, it was the meeting when the consultant spoke. It was a woman, and she showed bump outs in Bethel, mm -hmm. and she saw signage all over the place. Mm -hmm. I left that meeting with a very negative feeling. As did other people around me. So I am a little surprised. Based on what? What was the name of the feeling based on? Oh, the signage, the aesthetics. The signage part, the signage issue. The okay. signage was terrible. Yeah. And the aesthetics of her, I think, <coughs> I mean, in general, it was a poor report. That's how I reacted. Okay. So I'm a little surprised that you would then, you must have had some of that feeling from the audience, that you would then take some of that advice and go ahead as boldly as you did. I mean, well, I, I would hope you're not planning to put so much signage up because well, you recommended I, it. I, have, I really have to say, nobody else came up to me and said, oh, this is a bad report. Really? We received nobody. no feedback saying that the bump outs were a bad idea or that they were not, you know, something well, we, we saw were willing to try. Correct. And I think people were just... Right, but uh, up, huh. until, up until they were finally out there and on the road, <coughs> Nobody ever came to a meeting and said, this is a bad idea. The, the parts were, we, were, we gave three options to the public to pick up the pot. Which one do you want? We had a pots meeting. We had a pots meeting, exactly pots right. And, pots benches. and um, it was also with the benches and, trash and the trash cans. How was that? No, wait, 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 let me finish, Jeff. Nobody said, hey, this is a bad idea, forget about it. What they did say was, I like that pot. Yeah. And somebody said, I like that pot. And somebody said, I like that pot. And that's how we came down to choosing what pot. We, Adam put up their little stickers, which one were you in favor of? And that's how we came down to making the decision true. we did. The, the, the pots were presented, but I don't think anybody had any concept how they were going to be used so profusely. Maybe you're right. And this, I, I, I asked the question, are you planning to do some of what she suggested about signage? No. Because I think if you were, we need to really... Signage, signage is a very delicate issue. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. And so uh, that is going to be addressed very seriously. We, you know, we've had some other ideas about how to handle it other than putting up a bunch of signs. Right. Right. That's an energy. Um, actually, 
the bump outs, the pots, were instead of having one of those green signs on both sides of the road that say crosswalk. Yeah. So that, 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 was, that was our choice. That was one of the rationales for using the flower pots. Mary. In 2008, when the road was repaved, yes. and all of those green signs were put up, marking every crosswalk, they were rapidly criticized and removed very right. soon after the project was completed. And weren't there they also bump outs up by the Spooner building that we had to be removed later on? Yes. N not, not temporarily removed, there were asphalt bump outs. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's right. The last time we, so I understand that 80 pots is a bigger test than eight, <laughs> but it's a smaller test than, than what we did the last time for safety, which but was to put down time. asphalt and then take it up. Right. I believe the Du Bois and King report um, asked you to put these out in additional spots other than where those original bump outs in front of the pharmacy and who was Sylvia were created. Right. So that was their recommendation mm -hmm. That's right. in that report. That's right. And um, you followed that. That's what we did. Go ahead, Jeff. Did, did you have something? Thank you. Yeah. And then, and then so the other Jeff. Sorry, that. I think this is an enormous blunder, and I think it's the responsibility of the EDC to hold this firm accountable for this. And I want to hear the EDC say that they're going to hold this firm accountable. I don't think we're going to hold anybody responsible until we know who is responsible or if there's any responsibility. So I think we need a better understanding of the situation. Yeah, we haven't got a complete picture of what's going on. I understand here. that, but in the future, if you're going to hire other professional consulting firms, yeah. where's the accountability? Well, that's what we're doing right now, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. No. I'm sorry? This is um, an education for yes, many of us. And when you say that you ask people, are, are you putting things regularly on the listserv? Is there enough information that's going into the Vermont standard? Is there a way that you feel comfortable that the Woodstock community really understands what you're doing? Whether you brand yourself so you, get, you give a, a, a presentation via uh, social media or whatever way. But I think a lot of people don't know what you're doing. And by the way, I did respond as somebody who thought the pots looked very nice and that it solved um, a problem marking off the crosswalks because I walk all the time. And I, I know if you don't know there's a crosswalk, you might go right through. So it's danger. But I had no idea how this all came to be and nobody seemed to know what the uh, Department of Transportation would say. I mean, so there's a lot of information that I think you need to make clear to the Woodstock community. I think as far as, sorry, if I may just say for a moment, I think that as far as communication is concerned, communication with the town, um, we take that very seriously. It's very important to us that we try to communicate to the town at large what's happening, when it's happening, how to get involved, how to give feedback. Um, Definitely, yeah, we definitely do our best, and I can say that it's it's almost impossible to get to everyone. And when I'll just say, when something like this is happening, people are paying attention, and so they're reading the list surf, they're reading the thing in the newspaper, they're reading the the flyer on the window, they're reading all of the things. But when something like this isn't happening, and when something like this hasn't happened for a while, when there isn't a major change, then People sometimes just pass by it, and I think we all do that. We're all guilty of that. We all get eight million you emails a day. The Garden Club, which has a civic beautification committee that is responsible for many of the uh, the planters and things on the green all, all around town. I do not believe you uh, contacted the Garden Club at all. I'm Did not you? Sure. I know that we've been in touch with the Garden Club. About other that's, that's you address that. We did contact the Garden we Club. We did. In fact, wasn't um, Mrs. Camp involved to Mer a certain degree? Merrily and that was different. both Merrily and, 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 and um, Mary Bourgeois. 
So this is not to say, well. sorry, uh, uh, this is not to say that, that your comment is not valid. It absolutely is valid. It is very important that we get this information out to the public. It's critical. And so if there are other ideas that you have, something that we have not tried, then please, by all means, we would like to know. We, we do want to be able to communicate this effectively. Um, but I just, I do think it's important for me to say that, that we are trying. <coughs> And we Je appreciate that. Okay. Sorry, Beth, uh, they've okay. had their hands up for a while now. These okay. will probably be the, the last or close to the last comments, Jeff and Jeff, and then we'll. So um, I'd just like to say that as a result of this perhaps failing uh, on, the, and on the, the uh, traffic calming end of things as much as we may have hoped, it may have a, it, it may have a silver lining. And because I, you know, I have in the spot where a number of us are hearing lots of public comments from people who could visit our town. And I can't tell you how many people have commented on the beauty of these flower pots that are just visitors to Woodstock, because I hear it. And so I'd like to say that that may be a silver lining. Now, if you, now it may be that going forward, you, you would consider keeping half of the ones you put out and, re and replanting them next year and putting them on the sidewalks mm -hmm. near the crosswalks but on the sidewalks and, and continuing that so that, that, that uh, this project doesn't have a, a completely and that, that's failure. That's part, of, that's part of what they're... But I wanted, the wanted to let you know there have been a lot of positive yeah. comments from visitors who would not mm -hmm. comment on the website. Okay, thanks let, for saying that. Yeah, thank you. Good. Okay, let's so how much again was paid to the consulting firm? How much? Was paid to the consulting firm? 26000 So I still think it's unacceptable and that twenty six plus 17000 has been spent. And you're watching all of you. You're like, yeah, okay, we made a mistake. Big deal. Let's move on. Yeah. Like, no, well, that's, 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 that's not what 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 that's not I don't know what my comment is because I'm so angry about the fact that um, 17000 plus 26000 has been spent and wasted where it could have been used in advertising in Yankee Magazine or something. It's like, this is so ridiculous. I can't believe we wasted this much money. This, this is, realize that you're, you're kind of equa equating that to the bump outs alone, and we spent all that money just to do the bump outs. And we did not. We did an entire plan for, it's probably a long-term five-year plan of so many different items that are in there. All we did in the early going was pick a couple items we wanted to try out first that were affordable at the time we were doing them, and let's, let's do this. This was an easy fix. Let's get the benches. Let's get the bump outs. And let's try this. Look at that. And, specifically, and specifically because pedestrian safety was one of the major things that people talk about when they talk about things that they would like to solve for the town. Mm -hmm. So the bump outs were one of the solutions that we could try to solve for that. And by the way, it was only a suggestion by the, by the um, consultant. consultant, and they made several suggestions on the same item. Well, well, Correct. well I, to say that $26,000 is wasted, I think, is. Um, really uh, erroneous because there were many suggestions made in that report that we plan to follow through on and we have them. Like for example the benches. The benches seem to be university. That was part of the report. The benches it, that are on the green right now? Yes, that's right. Another part of the report was uh, trash cans and recycle. We should replace them. We're about to do that. That's part of the report. That's part of what the 26,000. Bump outs was one part. But, you know, it, if, we, if it wasn't done correctly or if it wasn't done uh, with full knowledge of what the consequences would be, we can change it. And that's what we plan on doing. Okay. Simple as that. All right, let me bring this to So a the whole $26,000 was not wasted. All right, let me bring this to a close. I think that, you know, like... Uh, sorry, you haven't, had, chance you, you haven't had a chance, so I'll, I'll give you the last comment. Um, well, I mean, obviously everybody knows you have the welfare of the village <laughs> in, in your hearts, and nobody can argue with uh, the concept of safety or beauty, but I think the reality of the situation was um, it did not increase safety, but you know that because they've been pulled back. Um, I thought it was terrifying driving by through the village and seeing all those pots. 
And I understand that you're getting mixed reactions, both negative and positive. I, I'll be honest, I'm very surprised you've had so many positive because nearly everybody I've spoken to feels very strongly negatively. I fall into that camp. I, I, and you know, flowers are a huge part of my life. I applaud your trying to do this. I think it is over the top. I think you have 10 times more pots than you, you should have. I think it is headache making, and I think it's taking a charming, lovely old New England village and turning it a little bit like a Disneyland version of a charming old New England village. But I know you have mixed reactions. Um, I'm concerned that whatever you end up doing, um, whatever your final decision is, that certain people are going to be alienated on, 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 on both sides. So in that sense, it's a little bit of a, a no-win. But if at least half, I would think the 60 would be more accurate, a percent of the village is very uncomfortable with the reality of these pots out there, I, I really hope <laughs> that in the future, that 60% is not thinking, oh my gosh, this lovely village has been kind of ruined, even though your intentions have been really positive, and I'm now repeating myself. Okay. But I would just like to say, really think carefully about keeping very many of those pots, please. Now, there's been a lot of discussion about the number of pots. Why 80? Why did we go with 80? Um, why didn't we start smaller? The reason is simple. The, the initial goal was pedestrian safety. That was the initial goal, pedestrian safety. So when I walked around with the chief, that was the issue in mind. And when we put, and when he identified the places to put these, it was based on traffic flow and strictly with crosswalks. The cro this crosswalk is here, the traffic comes from there, put the big pots over here so that the cars can see them and put them at every crosswalk. That's what we did. That's what we did. Well, sorry. You could have just had one on either side right. instead of two, All four right. at a crosswalk. Yeah. Let, me, let, me draw, let me draw this to a close by, by trying to summarize just very briefly. I'm going to build on, Roger, what you said, and I think what you said explicitly, which is let's figure out what we can learn from this, let's be more fact-based and so forth going forward, um, is evident in some, in the tone of some or many of the comments. And uh, hopefully you heard it evident in our tone as well that, uh, you know, that, that I think we can learn from this. I think the two learnings are, A, make sure that, you know, uh, that the planning that we do is, tries to cover every eventuality. And secondly, going back to the communication point, is to, you know, is to uh, work as hard as we can to get input from as wide a variety of people as we can. By the way, that will not be successful. It will only be partially successful. Um, and so we all, as residents now, not as members of the EDC, we all have an obligation, I think, to try to be aware of, of what's going on. You know, and, and I think we are starting, well, not starting to, we have put more and more effort into trying to open up meetings, trying to inform people, giving time like this and so forth, publicizing things on the listserv, putting on the website, giving opportunities for people to have comments and so forth. And I think we just need to continue in that direction so that you know, points of view can be brought out early. And we all share that obligation. But I hope that I, we hear the tone of let's learn from this. And I hope you hear that from us as well. So, OK. Um, so going forward, there will be a, a, a further plan to do something with the pots. I suppose everything from throw them all out and yep, you know to which place them all is around. not actually which, on the table. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> to, but my point is, we're going to try to figure out how to make the most use of them yeah, so while yeah. still not overdoing it. And I think Joe, one of the lessons here is that we should, whatever that plan is, we should give the public at least one clear shot at at it, <laughs> sure. so that we can decide. Because there's obviously such you well, know, very the, 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 the schedule is now the select board meets on. Um, August 20th. 20th. And that's when we will be, be presenting a plan to them for their approval. What? So we have to live with them as they are now until August 26th? Well, yep. we, have to, we have to get approval from the, the select board. Not August 25th, well, August 20th. Right? And they approved them to begin with. Yeah. Yes. So they gave approval that's right. to begin with. 
I mean, the pro yeah, yeah. I, I think the answer to that is yes. I mean, they've been moved off the roads. There's no, there's no safety issues anymore, or or safety help, whichever your point of view is. It's not a safety point anymore. So. Okay, I think we have to move on. All right. The next is um, an item, an update on Teagle's Landing. Um, sorry, I'm gonna take a second. I'm gonna shoot for an 8:30 conclusion. Oh, really? Yeah. You are an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, on Teagle's Landing, Joe, do you yeah. want to uh, propose? We have a motion, actually. So that we can just put up the motion, perhaps. Right. Um, <coughs> given, well, let me just, I'll, I'll just go through this and show you the time. So, the Revitalization Committee has been asked to develop a more comprehensive plan, the original plan for Teagle's Landing, for those of you that weren't at the prior meeting. Can we, can we, can we just get outside? Do you like outside? Um, well, and it seems to me that we should actively involve the Garden Club that um, may feel very uh, strongly about I think that's wanting participation. I think that's a great idea. Since well, we have so many members here, said. it seems like a good time to say that. Yeah. Should, we should actively involve the Garden Club. Uh, in, in this, I think that's a terrific. Well, uh, well, well, so let me camp is involved. She is from the better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just suggest that can, can we bring that up right at the end of this yes. motion because I, the, this motion will indicate how we could do that if we were going to. The, re, the committee has been asked to develop a full plan for Teagle's Landing rather than the plan that was originally proposed to us, which is just stairs and railings, which we knew was a half effort. And they did that. They came back to us last time with a proposal, which we then said, let's go get some estimates and so forth. We didn't fully approve it yet. Um, as, we've, as we've moved forward, we, it's clear that, that there's significant design issues and to the point about that's been made really on the last topic, that having drawings that can be shared with the public where people can see exactly what was done, what, what is being proposed to be done before we spend a significant amount of money actually doing it, would be a good thing. Um, we also need to have approval of the Conservation Commission, the Design Review Board, and the Village Development Review Board. And the funding requirements of Teagle's Landing are likely to be meaningful. Our estimates are in the, in the order of an additional forty dollars to $50,000. So given all of those things, what we are proposing, or there's a motion to repurpose. So just as a reminder, for those of you who weren't here, we allocated $5,000 and the village trustees allocated $5,000 to fund the rebuilding of the stairs and the railing at Teagle's Landing. That now, we have not spent any of that money and what we're now proposing is to repurpose the EDC's 5000 and to simply hold the village's 5000 and to repurpose a maximum of $5,000 of the original grant that we made to fund the design and the cost estimation of the new Teagle's Landing. So that we could basically have a set of drawings, uh, have a set of drawings that can be then approved by the commissions and so forth. And the, what that $5,000 would go towards are these seven steps. Developing construction landscaping drawings and requirements for replacement of the steps and railings to meet the safety codes, installation of new plant material, any additional landscaping required, appropriate seating, this is all for Teagle's Landing determining the ADA requirements that we'll face, presenting the findings to the three review boards, revising the plans to address any concerns that they raise, then soliciting competitive bids from three companies, evaluating these bids and recommending to us a selection. We would then either, I hope, approve it, but obviously we'd have to decide, uh, and then present the findings, um, for present the budget to us. If we approved it, then presenting the plans to the select board. So we're basically, and this is to some, uh, to be perfectly honest, to some extent, is a bit of a, re of a recalibration of how much planning we do and how much information we get out at which stage of the process, in part from learning from the POTS. I think maybe, you know, we can debate exactly you know, how much we should have done, but I think here we're trying to say, look, let's, let's, let's plan this fully, let's have all of the drawings available so people can see them before we spend you know, any significant amount of money. Because Teagle's Landing is an important may, thing. May so. I ask you to consider one thing sure. before you hire uh, more consultants? You have such a valuable asset right here of people who volunteer consistently. Uh, the Garden Club is one, has many brilliant gardeners. Could they 
as volunteers, be your consultants before you hire anybody else. We're not finally hiring somebody. I thought you just said no, that. No, we're hiring uh, somebody to expedite the process. Well, the safety issue is of one thing. No, 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 not the safety issue. Uh, to expedite the process of going through these three committees. Right, the well, it's to do this. It's to yeah. do yes. all these things. The to do all these things. Who's doing the drawings? Who's Jack doing Rossi. What? A landscape, a landscape a architect. architect. He's a landscape architect here in town. He's done most of the work for yeah. the East oh, End. Right. He's terrific. I yes, so but he's the one who's going to be doing the drawings. And well, we're and going and through all this process. These are, the, these are the seven things that we need to do. Well, and, and in theory, he is yeah. the one who would be in theory doing this were it to pass. Right? Right. 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 If, if the motion not, passed. Yeah, if the motion passed. But this is the work that we think needs to be done in order to spend, I mean, it's the in order to spend only 5000 rather than, you know, 50. So, Roger and then Beth. So, can I suggest that the first step is not doing the drawings and hiring a consultant to, well, you know, because obviously this stuff needs to be done by a consultant. Um, first, define the value that Teagle's Landing brings to the town and define what's wrong with it now. You know, uh, because I think I think one of the things that, that we need to get better at explaining is why we've chosen this particular initiative to go after. So what is it that Teagle's, what, what's the value that Teagle's Landing adds to the town? And I'm not saying it doesn't, but I think that needs to be explicitly defined before you start asking people to do drawings, because then you can base them on, on the value that... Well, I don't, quite understand, I don't quite understand the question. Value in terms of what? Dollars and cents? Sorry, Joe, hold on one second. Beth, you had a so, and I know that that many people think that Du Bois, du Bois and King have been thrown under the bus tonight, but a part of that twenty-six thousand dollars discussed Teagle's Landing, so people should go to the website and look at their response to the question about Teagle's Landing as part of the whole revitalization piece. It's in there. Teagle's Landing was a, a major part of the conversation that was had during those early meetings when people from the town were coming up and talking about, you know, the parts of the town that they loved, the parts of the town that they would like to see revitalized. Um, the safety issues at Teagle's Landing are, you know, clear and obvious, and it is a place that people love to visit. So, right, so I feel like those steps have already been, have right. already been accomplished. I think you yeah. just you need to, yeah. from the standpoint of Everything you do now has to be sold to the public. Um, so from the standpoint of selling this to the public, you need to define the value as people in the town expressed it. Mm -hmm. And you've already got that, so great. Yeah. Yeah. So we just need to make that part of the package. Well, I think, yeah, it, 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 fine. I think, yeah, so maybe as part of this process, we'll make sure to, as part of this phase, and we don't need to pay extra for this, we can do this, no, is to communicate it. that to the town. Yeah. As, as, while this is going on, we would make sure to communicate that. Good point. All right, so, the, the, so this is the motion to... Well, could you go back to the previous yeah. slide, and I'm assuming you're making the motion here, and... Well, actually, Joe is... Joe, oh, oh, so I am. So, so... Sorry, I'm in the wrong place. It's, it's ours. Yeah. Yeah. This has been, this is on the website. So this is, I, I understand yeah. that. But this is the motion right here. Correct. And the second page, I think, is attached to this because it is specifically what we are asking to do. Right. But it, it's a, that's a rather long motion. So you might just say, as presented. But that's fine. Or, so, okay. But if Joe's making, I'm just yeah. trying to keep this so that we're yeah. clear on who's making the motion and keep it sort of. I, I was explaining the motion, but Joe and I agreed that I would explain it. But yes. So is there, is there a second? Second. Okay. All right. Is there any discussion about this? Again, we're repurposing rather than new funding, given the you know the context that we're in. I would like to um, I would like to amend the motion to include the input from the Garden Club. Okay. And also, would you accept also then an amendment to make sure that we add to this list of activities the communication of the rationale for Deepest Landing? Sure. Yes. So, so can we make a motion to accept those all at the same time. Yeah. Can I get some clarification on this? So where this is to this money's going to Jack to fund this, to put out to bid to three different companies and not including himself. Right, he's not. So he's not he's not he's, he's not, not a potential designer. 
he's just doing the work to get the bids. Is that right? No, he's designing it he's and then doing the bids for the contractors. Okay. All right. okay. Yeah. He's going to help us hire the best contractor for the at the best okay. price. Because it's like an art, you know. Right, right, right. I got you. Pull together the bids. Right. So I, I'm unclear then. Um, so who gets the ten thousand dollars? Nobody gets. $10, Nobody $10, gets ten thousand dollars. So let's go back. So there's five thousand dollars we're repurposing, and then the trustees' money. There's five thousand for a total of ten. Right. So the trustees. Right. Trustees' money will not be touched it, it will at be, this stage. If it's it's spent when, it will be spent when, when the stairs are no. repaired under the new plan. Still not clear. So, so the, the motion is to repurpose it for to be ex expended upon what? Th these seven tasks. Hiring a, an architect to do these seven tasks. So that, is which there will an RFP was that gets issued for yeah. architects to actually put that out there? It doesn't meet the criteria of enough money. Six thousand. So, who who bids on it? I mean, who and bids on being the architect, or who bids on on these the on the ten grand? No, no, no. It's it's not going to be ten grand. It's going to okay. Just the history. The, the at the last meeting, the revitalization committee, in response to a request, came back to us with a thirty-nine thousand dollar request to finish Teagle's Landing. They had they had come with ten thousand dollars just for the stairs. <coughs> Yes. But we said, right, and so they then came back with a second proposal that said it's an additional 39000 Yeah. Right? So uh, we're, what they're now saying is we don't want to spend the 10000 This is a $50,000 project. We don't want to spend the ten and the thirty-nine without a plan. So what we'd like to, do, what we'd like to ask you for, instead of 49000 is 5000 uh, we'd like to ask you for five thousand so we can do this. What we're what the end product of this is is a I think a rock solid proposal that I'm guessing will cost about fifty thousand that we may approve or we may not approve. If we do approve it, we'll have to fund and, and, forty, and, and forty five thousand of it, and the village will fund their five thousand. So in addition to uh, drawing up a plan, Jack is going to be pretty much a project manager and going to these three boards presenting uh, what would, what the idea is and getting approval from the, the, the conservation commission, the DRB and the BDRB. And he's going he's <coughs> to expedite that process in addition to drawing up the plans. Does that make sense or not? If, if, it, if the motion is to pay Jack Rossi $5,000, that's what it sounds like. Isn't it hire an expert? And isn't that expert Jack Rossi? It is Jack. So it's to pay Jack Rossi right. to do these things. Isn't yeah. that what the motion yes. is? Yes. In effect, yes. yes. We haven't, I mean, the motion, it, I don't know how we would pick the, I mean, that's the person who we're considering. Yes. Who they're, who they're right. considering. It might not be 5,000, though. It's, not it's a maximum of 5,000. It doesn't say the max up to 5,000. It's a maximum. It says a maximum, yeah. yeah. Um, do, do you know after the hurricane, it was a disaster down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it's such a wonderful place, right in the middle of the village for whether you're eating ice cream or visitors having lunch, um, at the time, I, I, it came through the garden club, but please understand I am not speaking for the garden club. But I, I, I was on the board, something I talked to Allison Clarkson. Mm -hmm. She got us the picnic benches right back there that have always been popular. Has Allison been consulted uh, in any way about her thoughts? She's, she's our representative. She's your senator, actually. Our, our senator. <laughs> You're our senator. <laughs> right. But I mean, has, has this come up? Um, at the I state know, level. She's been invited to all the meetings. I mean, she has. But is there any follow-up? Follow-up on what? By you guys to her. If well, she didn't she's come. Well, she's been invited to meetings. It's her choice to come or not. For, for her input specifically on whether yes. or not Kegel's Landing should be renovated and should be up, should be. No, no, to see if there are any state funds that are available. Oh, well, again. Um, As I say, the picnic benches were washed away. Everything right. was a mess. It was a simple I question to Allison, and, and suddenly we got a picnic I, I bench. Also, we also have somebody on our on our board that is also uh, very well uh, I, I well informed it, in that. I think part of the planning process is perfectly fine to add. Let's uh, 
Yeah. Can we amend it again to add in if this to you know that yeah. we'll look for state funds if they're available? Okay, that's fine. It's a good suggestion. All right, let, let's come back. Charlie, you said, I'm not sure you, uh, are you? It just seems like what we're voting on is to hire Jack Ross right. to do these things. That's right. I think that's basically without what we're voting. Naming without the naming the person. Yeah. Well, it's fine. To, should we amend the motion to name him? Sure. Okay. Yeah. We'll hire Jack Rossi to do it. That's fine. I, I, it, and you have a concern with the selection of Jack, with the process of selecting him? If you do, that's fine. Well, it's just an odd thing for us to be in the position of hiring somebody specifically without looking at other terms. Uh, I would agree with that. It feels, like, it feels like we shouldn't just say, we should have at least bids. three bids. <sighs> You sorry, know, I, sorry. I, I'm sorry, but you know, you've already granted money to organizations, whether it's Pentangle or others, who have not put a things out to multiple bids. They have actually. Well, no, no, they hired a consultant. They didn't put out for bid for multiple consultants. Um, but this has been this is dragging on. It's an unsafe situation there. Jack has done marvelous work in his community. You're not talking about a tremendous amount of money. Why slow this down? unnecessarily when common sense says Jack can do this and we've do seen it because well. of East, right. uh, the East End. I think, let me just I say that. I agree with you. Well, I agree with you, Jack. However, I will also say that there are lots of people that sit in the chairs, you know, all of these chairs, that might have other things to say. And we well, need to might, be, we need to be, we need yeah. to be responsible stewards of the money. And <clears> so I do think that it is important. It is the right thing to do, it is the process to ask for bids. When we, when we are about to pay somebody to do something, we ask for bids. That's what we did with Du Bois and King, whether people like them or not, that's what we did. That's what we do when we hire people, we ask for bids. So you're suggesting that we ask for bids for the $5,000 to pay Jack that we, that we actually that take we the ask. motion as written, as opposed to as intended, perhaps. And as, as written, it's to hire an expert, and then we would amend it to say that we want to take bids. So is that what you want? Is that what you're saying? You want us to and, and I do also bid. Wait a minute. Okay. Let me ask the question. Yes. Do you want us to put out bids for the $5,000 instead of just hiring Jack? I think that that would be the right thing to do, number one. Number two, when we first, when we first, I see you shaking your head, I know. No, no. Don't when we first gave the 5K, that was for stairs, period. Right. That was for stairs. That is different. That is not right. hiring somebody to come in and develop a plan and do drawings and do all those things. If, if we were sticking with the original plan of just stairs, then it would be the original plan. But now that plan has changed, and now we are hiring somebody. And it, it does feel irresponsible for a state board to just go out and say somebody is hired. Yeah, Courtney, quick, quick question, and then I think we've got yeah, the frame. That's a good question. Frame. Um, if we go out to bid for something that's being worked on in the town, eventually shouldn't that eventually go to the town manager to go out for bids and not yeah. the EDC to figure well, out? Well, that's, that's the process. That's I think. the process. No. We're not required to or, bid or make out. a selection. Whatever, however, they make right. the selection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's leave it. Let's take off the table the, the yeah. process for doing it. We're not legally required right. to, to yeah. solicit bids. I think what we're debating here is two simple points of view. What, what Mika has just said and what Jeff has just said. They're both valid. I think let's just make a decision. Yeah. We're granting the money. Well, 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 that's that's John, I think part of this, you know, with me, I, I think about our new structure. Yeah. We've got the subcommittees, and it's up to the subcommittees to pretty much go and figure all this stuff out and then present it to us. And right. then we pretty much put our faith in the subcommittee doing the research and say this is the right question for the job. But I think if we keep stepping in that, then what's the point of having all the subcommittees do right. that work? That's a good point. Right. Okay. So, uh, it, yeah, and we're about to talk about the subcommittee. So, all right, let's let's then have a vote on this on this motion. I, I would like to clarify what the motion is yeah, because I don't, I don't know if I know it anymore. Sorry. Okay. Well, it, the, the motion is. The, Back it up. The mo <laughs> All right. I, I, the buttons on this thing are opposite, so maybe I'm holding it upside down. There we go. Right there. And I think it's confusing that there, there, the. The 10,000 has nothing to do with the EDC. It's, so it's informational. That shouldn't even be in there. That's fine. It can be taken out. <laughs> so it, it's just to connect it. That's fine. We, we, can, we can strike it from, from the motion. I think if you are in favor of, uh, of, of a... Uh, if you're in favor of a s setting things out to bid and that sort of process, then you would be vote against this motion. And, we're, and because we would then set up a regular process and have a motion that was precise and so forth. If you are 
more. If you have in Jack Rust, then you vote then, for right, this. Then you'd vote for this. So okay. let's just go around and let's just support sort of okay. it. Yes, I vote. You're in yes, favor of the motion. I'm in favor of the motion. Okay. Clarify again. There were some amendments proposed to this motion. Sorry. Are we yeah. we're including the, no, we're not ignoring them. We're, we're, we're accepting. Well, it ha that hasn't been clear. But I'm okay, we're accepting the amendments. The amendments, the, you, 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 I have the amendments you have the amendments to include the garden club in the process. Right. Meant to adding, find, trying to find some state funds, and then we did have an amendment to hire Jack Rossi. Okay, that, that's so fine. So those were the three fine. amendments. Fine, those are the three amendments. Oh, and also including the EDC um, engaging the public more. So, so there were actually four amendments. Fine, fine. Was the lot, the, the lot engaging the EDC, have it, making sure that we engage the public uh, to make sure that we explain why why Tico's Landing is important well, and what the information was. Okay. So. Wait. Okay, thank you. Mika. No. You're opposed. Larry? Uh, uh, how long does it take to go and get three? Uh, it doesn't, we're, we're going to vote tonight. It, it's, it's however life. It, we well, can it's relevant to, to what Jeff is saying. Is it, is it a long process to go out and get it? It is. We can, hold special, we can hold special meetings. We won't be the hang up for it. It's however long it will take. I think you just have to use your judgment now to, to okay. do that. So. Well, then, then I'm, I'm in favor of going out and getting three bids, so I guess I'm against it. You're opposed to the motion. Okay, I'm also opposed. Charlie? No. I, I'm in favor of it. In favor of it. Okay. Uh, Julia? I actually think she's also. I'm opposed. Oh. Okay. So the nays have it. Wait, so. Courtney vote? Oh, sorry, Courtney. I'm opposed. That's the way it is mm -hmm. at this point. Right. Okay. All right. So I think the no. Okay. So the nays have it. So we, the motion is denied. And the next step, I think, is to, I think the, the sense of the committee is let's, um, you know, let's take into account those amendments and let's have a more uh, open process for the selection of so forth. And there may be other discussion that takes place over the next days or weeks that can improve the process further as we talk to the different people on the EDC to try to, to try to, I mean, I would encourage informal conversation among us and among people in town to try to come up with a motion that we can pass to Jeff's point because I think there's not too many people that disagree that Teagle's Land, like, well, yeah. like, I'm Teagle's Land is important, but, Teagle's land but and getting it done. We can get this, we can, we can get the right motion uh, crafted. I just think it sounds I, like we I, need a little I, more. I, I just might add that if, if we go through a bidding process just to get a consultant, Tingles uh, Landing well, is going to dig uh, this year. Well, we're not going to, let's not, let, let just, let's not debate that now. I mean, this, we've, we've made a decision on the vote, so now we need to move forward. But I think, I think, so, we've made that decision. Sir. Yes? But, um, Mr. Teagle was an important man in Woodstock, right? But why isn't this the responsibility of the town? Yeah, I'm going to move forward on that. I know it. Yeah. We are the town. So just one quick point. I applaud, I applaud the board for, or the commission for taking the most open and systematic approach to this. I think it's the right way to go. Okay. All right. Um, this is, um, to Michael's point, we're now going to talk about the EDC process going forward. Um, we are in the middle of two different approaches, the old approach and the new approach. The two approaches are not different. They seem much more different than they are. The objectives of the EDC, as we've all talked about, are the same. The priorities are staying the same. Um, the way we structure ourselves uh, going forward could change. Um, we have two proposals on the table. And Charlie, uh, only... Uh, I've called yours Plan B only because it came second, but I'm I was going to call it red and green, but I thought that was so ridiculous. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is share with you all the discussions that we uh, you know, had uh, over the past month individually. And the, we were mostly in agreement, but during that process, a new proposal came up, which I only shared with half of you because it came up halfway through. And so what I'd like to try to do is to get agreement tonight, if we can. Now, you know, I don't think we, you know, this has been a long meeting, and we can wait another month to decide this if we have to. So um, just as a reminder for those of you that are in the audience that haven't been here uh, before, in 2016, we identified and the select board agreed that the EDC should focus on four things. Marketing Woodstock, expanding housing and related services, improving physical amenities, and supporting businesses in the business environment. And that has not changed. 
and we do that to increase the number of visitors who are most likely to develop connections to the area and contribute to growth and to grow and diversify the resident population to improve the quality of life in the community. So that hasn't changed at all. These are words that are taken from the minutes of a select board meeting on December 13th, 2016. We're staying very faithful to that. Now, we, and we've had a whole series of discussions, which I'm not going to summarize. Some of a few of you have been in these meetings, where basically we would form four subcommittees, each one focused on one of these priorities. We already have a subcommittee to market Woodstock. We have two subcommittees uh, that are focused on improving physical amenities. We would, you know, have those continue to operate, but, but coordinate between them in a single committee. And what we've talked about are two options. Plan A, not favored, but Plan A. We form four subcommittees, one for each priority area. The subcommittees develop and maintain long-term priority lists. And Roger, that is the way in which we know that Teagle's Landing is important, because these lists have been publicized. We've said that Teagle's Landing is more or less important than the green, which is more or less important than the bump outs, which is more or less important than the benches. And those lists are public. They have public input, because the subcommittee meetings are public. Um, all requests for funding come before the full EDC very briefly, in person, not just in writing, both in writing, but also in person. And it comes before the full EDC only to assign them to a priority committee. If Gail comes in and says we, she wants to build housing, it goes, we decide it goes to the housing subcommittee. And then Gail or whoever is proposing it, it could be an EDC member, an EDC project, works with the housing committee, tries to figure out where it is in the priority list. If it rises to the top of the priority list, the subcommittee comes with a proposal to the full EDC that says we want to fund this. This is our highest priority in housing. The proposers can come from the community, from the EDC, they can work together. There's no more community grant or EDC project. It's just priority projects. Subcommittees meet in public meetings monthly, developing these projects and grants, resetting their priorities over time. And when ready, they propose funding to the full EDC. So the full EDC becomes a, a strategic group that's just really trading off on priorities. The subcommittees will include both EDC and community members, as the current subcommittees do. And the proposals to fund projects outside of the four priority areas goes to the fifth subcommittee, which we haven't named, but it, it in truth is the non-priority committee. <laughs> <laughs> That's an attractive name. <laughs> and in fact, and, and we've talked about establishing a budget limit for that committee uh, this year of 15% of our total budget, which would be about $45,000. There are some of us who think that, that it should be zero, but but Others, I think, practically think that that's too dramatic a step to take in the first year. Um, so that's plan A. And I've, we've talked about this many times before in many public meetings and also in private discussions among one-on-one, -on -one, so as not to violate any rules. <laughs> plan B, and Charlie, you can modify this, is, is the same structure as plan A. Except instead of meeting, uh, the full EDC would meet monthly, but instead of making those priority decisions and those funding decisions monthly, we would do it annually. I'll call this, if it's all right, Charlie, I'll call this sort of a town meeting type approach. It's very similar to what we do for the town. We would, we would plan our annual funding and priorities in September, October, and November. We would, make all, we would identify all the projects that we could conceive of. We'd figure out which ones we wanted to fund. We would hold a big meeting in December to present our proposal to the town and have some sort of town input or maybe vote, I, I don't know. And then we would stick to those projects and those budgets for the year. And so if Jeff comes up and says, you know, uh, he wants fireworks or flowers or whatever, if he doesn't do it in September, October, November, it's not going to get done. It could get done the next year. He'll remember to do it the next year. Now, I've put together, in my own opinion, how we might pick. And I think that there are four things that we should decide, and I think in the first two are the most, the first two are in priority order. We need to stay focused on our four priorities. That's what's going to move the needle. Housing and marketing Woodstock and, and so forth. We need to stay focused. In my opinion, my check marks, that both plans do that. We have four subcommittees that are focused. Second criteria is it provides the opportunity it provides a significant opportunity for the community to provide input. I think both, in my opinion, both plans do that. They do it very differently, in a different time frame, but they both do it. 
Plan B is clearly more efficient in terms of the use of our time. And there are some people on this commission who are concerned, legitimately concerned, understandably, about the amount of time that it might take to be on subcommittees and so forth. And one possibility is to say that you don't have to be on the subcommittee if you're on the EDC. You can be, but you don't have to be. You can just come to the monthly meetings and play the strategic role. And then the fourth is it allows for flexibility. And I think clearly plan A is more flexible than an annual plan. So are we ready to make it? Do, do we want to discuss this? Are we ready to make a decision? Do we need to noodle on it for another month? I, I would only add that another I'm going to let the EDC talk for a few minutes and then you can come in at the end because we need to discuss it. I would only add a number five yeah. uh, might be that it allows for more citizen input as to what the priorities of the EDC are when you're looking at a budget annually similar to what the town budget is. Well, I think that's point number two really, isn't it? You're saying that point number two, plan B is better on point number two. I would agree with that. Right, that's, so that's sort of what I meant by point out. Okay. So you're arguing that it's better. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with that partially also because I think that sort of similar to what we were talking about tonight in terms of communication and people feeling like maybe they're not, um, they're not kept abreast of what's happening, people are, all of us, are more inclined to pay attention to something, read something, hear something when it, it, there's a, a big something going on around it. There's flower right. pots. There's a meeting happening. You have a limited period of time. When there's an entire year where you are just rolling and paying attention to something on a rolling basis, it's human nature to just sort of let stuff go. Right. Okay, other, good. I agree with what she says. I didn't hear what you said. I totally agree with what she says. I think, uh, I think um, B has that. Plan um, B. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I'm always concerned with time. Um, I do flex, I, I like flexibility to a certain extent. I don't know if there's an amendment to that somehow where there's extraordinary circumstances. Mm -hmm. I don't want to throw that slow, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you know, there could be. I mean, yeah. I mean, and, and, and we could set criteria for extraordinary circumstances right. if we did right. plan B. I feel like if we have one big meeting at the end of the year, it's going to be mess. I feel like you're going to have a whole bunch of different people with a, a bunch of different priorities. Uh, how, I don't know how long that meeting is going to be or how many, you know, I, I you know, you, you had that list of, uh, of um, 49, grant, 49 projects and, you know, so we get 10, 12, look how long it took us, to, we, with just this last group, uh, to, to come up with decisions and, and you know, uh, I, I feel like that's not going to be a very efficient way at all. And I think it's more responsive to the community that when somebody comes, that when a grant comes up and we, we decide it's a good idea and it needs to be funded and we have the ability to fund it, that that's what we should be doing. We should, I think we should look at it when it comes up. Okay, okay. Sally and then Michael. So, so the one question I have is that we have all, the EDC has already publicized a grant schedule for this year which has a September grant deadline. I have already received several inquiries from community members about that. Right. So, so, so let's agree that we need to decide, but let's not let that drive us. We, we, just putting that on the table. We have to make sure that we respond to that either way, depending on what we decide tonight or next month. Michael? Yeah, you know, initially I was kind of unsure about Plan B, but what I like about it is that it really allows us to focus on our priorities, on the subcommittee priorities. And at the same time, you know, I think it'll pretty much do away with that fifth committee, fifth subcommittee because you're not getting the requests that don't fall under those priorities. And, and if someone's got to wait six months to put a request in, they might just not do it. I think that's going to, you'll find that that'll happen a lot. But is, it, is that a good idea? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's, know if that's good, good or, or not. But again, if, if, our, if our goal is to focus on our top big bet priorities, then that's what we have to do versus distraction from Somebody other. Somebody can come in with a great idea on January 5th. And we're going to tell them they have to wait for a year, and it, it, that you know it may no longer be viable. Just like electing a bad president, you got to wait four years. <laughs> 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 Strike that. Strike that. Julia, and we sometimes forget to call on you. I'm sure you have some views here. Which do you have a point of view? My my only perspective on this is that I wonder if for Plan B, uh, for better and for worse, I, I wonder how much it would encourage. Um, a different uh, type of participation. So I think that's worth considering. I wonder whether people would um, 
volunteer for the board who are not who, who don't have as much time, um, who are who who are busier maybe, which uh, could be great in certain ways, and it could. I, I wonder about that. That's all. I think everything else that I'm thinking has been said by um, everyone else. Who hasn't spoken on this? Joe, do you want to say anything? Any thoughts? Um, no, I'm going to wait and see. Charlie, you want to add anything? No, I, um, I think Plan B does force people to think about larger projects, mm -hmm. and it forces a lot more advanced planning. <coughs> so for that, yeah. that aspect, I like it. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I will say, you know, given that we meet month to month, and we take on some big loads at times, um, the opportunity to uh, use time more efficiently is appealing to me. Yeah. So I, I'd probably lean in that direction. Uh, may I just ask a question? Um, where have we spoken at all about some of the smaller, whether it's whether it's um, a smaller grant that perhaps you know doesn't necessarily fall into extraordinary, but still feels like ah, oh, that's a that's something that's worthwhile, and we should. <laughs> that's the slippery slope. That's the slippery <laughs> slope. I know, but I, I do feel like as a as a town committee, um, it's important that we are are available to the little people, you know, who still have who still maybe have some good ideas you know, and maybe want to be I able back, to. I didn't realize we had big people in town. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, like I if don't. Gotta, if well, you have a smaller idea that maybe doesn't fall within. <laughs> The four main headings, I do think it's a good idea to have a fifth bucket. I guess that's all I'm saying. Or if it's a small idea that does fit into one of the four buckets. I, I, I totally, I, I agree with Mika. I just would say that. Okay. Um, I'm going to take just a couple of comments from the, from the uh, audience and then, uh, and then I'm going to, I think unfortunately we have a little bit more work to do. To, to, to explore some of the nuances. I, they, this is more divided than I thought it would be. So, um, but just very quickly, Roger. So I realize a, a candle is a horse made by a committee, but what I'd like to suggest is I think you've got two very fruitful approaches there, and it might be useful to combine them. Maybe you could, maybe you could get yourself on a quarterly cycle instead of a monthly cycle. I don't think that's an unreasonable amount of time to ask somebody to come up with a coherent request and then I think it would be a good idea to do a planning meeting at the beginning or the end of the year and say these are the priorities that we see for the EDC going forward for the next year. We're going to meet quarterly to review grants and go over things, um, but do you agree and what input do you have? So that I think that you kill two birds with one stone that way and then the subcommittees can meet as they need to or monthly or whatever you decide to do the basic project management for the ongoing granted projects. Would you please return to the four um, categories that you had? The priorities? Yes, please. Also just want to add that at the very least what you were saying earlier is, is, is allow at least a little more time and force people a little more time to think about what their goals are and then coming in and creating that plan. Um, development. And I think I've seen a lot of people come in here with really a lot of last minute stuff and not a lot of right. yeah, thought put exactly. into it. And they should be sent back to mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. They have been sent back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Last comment, yeah. Right. So when the EDC was first formed, you allocated 60% towards promotion, 30% towards beautification, and 10% towards administration. Right. Okay. Those numbers obviously are skewed and don't hold up any longer. What's the plan for this? There isn't, there isn't a plan for it because the role of the full EDC, what, what would happen under any of these plan A or Bs, what would happen is that the subcommittees would each put forward, would become advocates you know, for housing or for amenities, and they would each put forward their priorities. We've already done an analysis which suggests that we have less than half of the funding that we need to do all of the big projects that you could reasonably say might be attractive. And so setting priorities and making choices is going to be critical. And so the, the subcommittees will put forward, you know, the housing subcommittee will say, we think we want to spend $1.8 million over the next five years. Um, we only have 1.7 in total. And each of the committees will put forward, and then the role of the full EDC will be to make that decision. So we will, we will make that decision on the basis of what we see as the, as the major as the major projects and, and, and we'll, we'll trade those off. And those will be very public. I mean, that's sort of, I think, what Charlie is envisioning at the, at the year-end meeting 
you know, where we would have a point of view, but we would be getting input from the from the community. So, sorry, you had to also yeah, raise your hand. Way back, and I sort of lost it. There was forty-five thousand dollars mentioned for what? I didn't understand what that was for. Okay, so we get a number of small proposals that aren't any of these four things. Uh, you know, I I, I then, hate to pick on Mary. Fireworks. Sorry, Mary. Sorry. And you allocate 45,000 for the small ones? It's not so much the small ones. It's now, it's the ones that aren't these four things. Um, In other words, it's not, it could be small, it could be big. They're, they're mostly small. We, we but been, we've been asked to support $2,000 for music, uh, somewhat like one of, from one of the shops on Friday nights. Or fireworks. That's, or that's fireworks. That's, 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 $45,000 set aside for these... For, for, no, for projects, okay, first of all, we are moving, as we move towards a priority-focused approach, Yeah. that hopefully that amount will be requested less, people will be less upset if we say no, and eventually, I think many of us would like to eliminate it. <laughs> However, there... If I went back to that list of 49 grants that we've made, every single, every single one of those grants is supported by well-intentioned community members who think that they are doing things that will better Woodstock. And I think we felt the same way. We wouldn't have given them the money. We've said no to a number of things. And so cutting off a large number of small grants that are passionately supported by small parts of the community is a hard thing to do. And I don't know that we wanted to do it all in one step, I think is a practical matter. And so you can't have both. We, we, we've come up with a list of four and a half million dollars to spend. We have 1.7 million dollars that we're likely to have. We have a three million dollar gap. It isn't <coughs> going to close. We have to start saying no. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to say yes to. But we're trying to do it in small steps. And you can hear some of our colleagues here saying, well, yes, but. It's in just a, only because it's hard to, as yeah, you said. It's, it's hard a small time. So, yeah. so we're wrestling with that. And I think it may take us a couple of years to get to perhaps the most optimum, precisely optimum financial position. And we're going to have to explain and communicate to people why we're doing what we're doing. So, uh, it's so the process of growing and learning. Yeah. We're doing. I'll trust your judgment if this is necessary. <laughs> yeah, <go ahead. laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so just I just want to say that Plan A is, is most responsive to the public. Plan B sounds like it'd be more efficient for the board. Um, I think Roger's proposal is a good one for cutting it down the middle. I think a year is way too long to have to wait potentially, uh, but quarterly is not so long to wait. Uh, I would suggest you consider that, uh, changing it to that as, a, as one of the things to consider. Um, and, and I would keep that $45,000 for the small things that you don't know that come, might come up available at your monthly meetings. Okay. Just, yeah. Even if it were to, to, you know, happen in tandem with, yeah. you know, a, a, like an annual, almost like still a have an meeting. Annual, still have an annual meeting. That's gotcha. your prayer. Yeah. All right. Let me, let me propose the following. Since there's no motion specifically on the table, this is an organizational issue. Let me propose the following. In effect, mm -hmm. uh, let's work on this for the next month. It, it bothers me terribly that I've put a huge amount of time into Plan A and Charlie has effortlessly, effortlessly come up with Plan B. <laughs> <laughs> and gotten so much support for it instantly so that sorry. it sticks in my craw. <laughs> but I have to learn from him to, as to how to do that. But I, I think that the, the sense of the committee is pretty clear, but it can't quite be captured yet in a process. So let's work on it over the next month and come back and have the same conversation again. I do think, I mean, I am the, the first proponent of Plan A, but I do think certainly something in the middle, maybe the kind of thing that Roger talked about. And let's next time discuss what, how that how that might work. I think we have to put the details Thank on you. this so we can Thank make sure. Thank you. Okay. So, All right. John, I am going to bring up that September yes. credit deadline again because at the next meeting we'll be coming up to it. Yeah. I, I would. I would like. Okay. I would like to make a motion that we suspend the September grant process until we resolve how we're going to work. I think that the current process, with due respect to the past and so forth, is not sufficiently focused on big well-constructed proposals that focus on the four priorities. And I feel like it's time for us to stop 
I'm not saying that all the proposals would be bad proposals, but I don't think we are in a position to properly assess them according to the aspirations that we now have. And therefore, I'd like what to make a Sorry? What about Teagle's Landing? Well, I think uh, Teagle's Landing is not, is, not, um, is not yet a proposal. I mean, we, we, so we're, can it come up? Well, I think Teagle's Landing should follow. I think at the next meeting, we will discuss how we plan to proceed. And until we agree on how we proceed, I don't think we should grant any funding. That would be my that would be my proposal. I pr I would propose that we put our funding on hold because I don't think we're so essentially. Teagle's Landing is probably dead for this year. No, I'm not. I don't think that that's I, the case. I think it might be. Okay, it might be. If that's the it case, I think a spring project in 2020. If that what comes in 2020 spring project. I hope nobody falls down the steps before that. Yeah. yeah. Lock it off. I, 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 you don't have to agree. I'm just making. I'm just putting the pots in front of it. I think Sally is raising a, a good point. We do have to. We've only got a few minutes left, and we, we do have to decide whether to consider September grants or not. I, there's only two choices: we consider them or we don't. Um, is, you have you have made a motion. Uh, yeah, I, I would suspend the September grant cycle. Right, I move that we sus suspend the September grant cycle um, until we have until we have a process that can handle that we know how we're going to handle grants going forward. Can we have discussion? Yeah, of course. We um, have to have discussion. Can, how Was many? there a second? I'm oh, sorry. Do we have to have a second? Okay. No. Yeah, Thank discussion. You. Um, how many grants are there in the September cycle? Right now? How many grants? We you don't have any yet, but I've had people ask about. Oh, I misunderstood. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought there were there were already applications. No, no, no. And and people have called me to ask right. about them and, and wanted to know. Oh, okay. I feel better about them. Can can people who want to uh, submit grants still submit them and just be told that we're in the process of revising our? Well, I think part of it where people were wondering if you know if it takes some time and energy to submit a grant. So yeah. I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't encourage them to because we may, right. you know, they, 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 right. they, they might say, oh, I would have positioned it differently if I had known that housing was a priority. You know, right. Right. I, I don't know. But to I put it in the right bucket. Yeah. Right. So what? Uh, any, any points of view on this? Or? Yeah. I just, I'm not sure that it's a good idea to tell people that we, can, we aren't, aren't accepting grant proposals. I, mean, I can say, I think we can say uh, we, we can't tell you exactly when we can uh, consider them, but because well, we're do, we're well, we're, no, we're doing and we're looking at it in a new way in a new process. But well, I guess say that's what when you when you say you no, I just terminate said, the no, no, no. I didn't say terminate. I said to suspend the September grant cycle until we have a way of evaluating them. So I think what we would tell people is we're not accepting them in September. We hope to be accepting them very soon. I would make a motion, or I would. Proposed I'd like amendment. to propose an amendment. Thanks. Um, that we just put a timeline on that, a deadline on that. You know, we're we're not accepting them for September. We will be reaccepting them on blah blah blah, whatever that date is, just so that it doesn't drag out and people aren't left in the dark. But we can't set a date if we don't know how we're going to proceed. That's true. You're right. So we look at <laughs> look at just one month later. Uh, it depends on. I mean, I think you know. It, it, you know, I, I know it's frustrating to be caught in this, but, you know, insanity is what's the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same things and expecting a different outcome. We're going to keep getting that same list of projects if we don't change the process. Mm -hmm. So we've got to change it. So I, I think people change it. Just I, change I, I, it. Not. Well, we need to change Well, I mean, I think we, we need to, yeah, I mean, we need to, I, I don't, why don't we do this? Why don't we, why don't we um, agree? Let, let, let's agree then that we will, um, I mean, I, I, I think we're ready to make a decision next month. I do think, I mean, we're getting down to, you know, we're narrowing things down. People are, we're all fluent now in what the choices are. Charlie's came up with a good alternative. You know, we, it's, we don't have to study this. We can hire a consultant. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have to study this forever. I think we can make a decision next month. I just don't think we should make one tonight. I think we should put out so would that, be for a consultant like everything else. I mean, so I think, but Mika, what we could do is we could say that we're, we're going to push, we're going to push the grant cycle back a month. And if we want to be able to tell people things, and then I think next month, this is August, early September, we have a new process, and we'll be able to consider things starting in October. It might not be a cycle, right? I mean, and in the end, the four buckets don't change. Exactly. Right? Right. So whether whether it's September or October, I mean, yes, they may be reframing their right. the 
the wording in their grant a little so that it can fit into one of the buckets, but even if it, the buckets are still gonna be there anyway. So uh, actually, now that I think about it, I think that that part doesn't matter. Okay, so I think we should say, we should tell people that we, that we, we will announce in mid-September the schedule for grants for the remain, you know, what, how we will operate, because we'll be able to decide that in early September. And we'll publish a new schedule by, before the end of September. Is that acceptable? I think that gives, Larry, that gives people, a, you know, not a sense that that's we're just good. shutting down. No, we're just, that's good. So, so, so that's the motion then. So the motion then <laughs> is to suspend the <laughs> September grant cycle. For one month. For, well, what, what, no, until the EDC has a process in place, and they will announce in mid-September what the new grant cycle is. Well, I would say what the new grant process is. What the new grant process Because it may or may not have a cycle. Right? I mean, it, it, Okay. Yeah. Got it. Is that okay? Is there any further discussion? <laughs> okay with this? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Okay. Julia, I think you, because you're on the phone, we just may, need to make Actually, sure you're... Actually, she had to get off the phone. She got disconnected and Robin was done. <laughs> okay, fine. All right. Okay, the eyes have. Yeah. Okay, we've got a couple of last yeah. items. Yep. Yeah. Actually, you need to. Look at it. Okay. Um, I think the financial update is uh, everyone has seen the report. Um, the, it's you know the numbers are, as Roger said we've allocated about six hundred forty thousand. We have about three hundred sixty thousand dollars un unencumbered. Um, we do have five accounts that we would like to close. This is something that Sally does once a year, roughly, and it's a really good administrative thing to do. Sally, do you want to? Yeah, there's actually actually seven because there's a couple seven. accounts that have one has, like the village revitalization has $10 left in it. Mm -hmm. Let's just get those off the books so they are zeroed out. So, And I have contacted the Optimus Center. What? You want the $10? I'll take a case of beer, yeah. <laughs> cheap beer. Cheap beer. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, we have, um, the Student Employment, East End Eats, Village Green Lighting, um, they've all been contacted. The only one that is on here is Village, the window displays, it still has some funding in it, so that was an EDC project. We could also close that one out. The only old one that is still on the list is um, Wamba, is the Woodstock area mountain biking, and I've talked to them, they are still going to use those funds, they just need to get received. And so how much do we recover into our account? It's only $9,500. Okay. $9,598. Only? Do we need a... Well, I, think I know, but it's not like it's a huge amount of money. But yes, you need to motion and you need to do it. And the only thing I will say is that I need to... I have not had a re report from the town recently, so I will just need to make sure that these numbers line up with what they have okay. for balances. Can we make our motion then, you know, consistent with any modest, right. you know, minor... Right. Yes. Minor changes that yeah. don't aren't material. Yep. Okay, does someone want to make a motion? Did I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? Mary, did you need to say something? No, I have a question. For, okay. For Sally. All in favor? It's related. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the ayes have it, so we recover that money. Um, Wait, John said um, village green lighting, what do you need, Sally? Oh, that's already been done, sorry. It yeah, is, I, yeah, it we is had complete. complete. We had an approval on that, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Roger. Okay, thank, thank you, Roger. Thank you for your suggestion. Uh, Sally has two um, administrative expenses uh, that she is proposing. Yeah, and so I'm just going to explain that in the EDC contract coordinator contract as written, they have that I can spend up to $100 for administrative expenses without prior authorization. I really haven't done that much at all. So you want the hundred um, bucks? I want. <laughs> Um, there are actually two EDC accounts currently, one for administrative funds, which has been used for miscellaneous things like buying food for meetings and publicity, and uh, well, we actually have a publicity one, but just odds and ends. Um, so I'm going to ask if we could get um, $300 to supplement the state contribution of $250 for the Friday evening and Monday morning events for state to stay. For for what? For state, state to state. state. Uh -huh. So I, I wrote that out. State to state is a state program. State, um, state program. Yeah, and it's people. September 13th through 16th, and we have activities lined up. We're partnering with the chamber and with Woodstock Area Mountain Bike Association. So it's a mountain biking weekend. <coughs> Other towns have had 20 to 30 <coughs> families that have participated. So we don't know what we'll get. But. Mm -hmm. So the request is, so, and this is, this is actually, I mean, and if we use these funds from the administrative account, 
the funds are already there, so it's not even doesn't have to go to the select board or anything like that. And the reason why I'm asking is because we don't really have a process in place for requesting these kind of funds. Right. Can you just bring up the second one as well? And the second one is I'm asking for four hundred dollars for the community picnic. So that is what we have done for the community picnic is part of the visioning process is to do a public event that will be the next phase <coughs> of we've done all the information gathering I still have some cards here and we're going to put together a draft vision which will then lead into the specific projects that are going to be done so as part of this they like to do a, a public event only when this was being talked about back in April by some of the steering committee members we thought it would be nice to revive the community picnic so for any of you folks that oh there I <laughs> what, what, Mary. What, what happened to the photo Pardon me? What happened to the photo that was right there? Oh. Um, it was at Phil's. It was at Phil's. It's coming so back. I was going to point out the photo from, oh, okay. from one year when my kids oh, were just one out in the hall. I yeah, think. they're all over the place. So it's a great thing. It hasn't been held since I just before Irene. Mm -hmm. And all the people that have, we've talked to are very enthusiastic. Billings Farm has said yes. It is never, they never, never had a budget before. They've always managed to sort of get contributions and then they charge Phil for also managed to get contributions. Well Phil well no Candace. And Candace yeah, is actually and Candace is working on it with us. So so what I'm asking for is four hundred dollars as sort of seed money just in case we need it. We're hoping that there won't be any need for the funds, but just in case we do. Mm -hmm. So those are the two requests. Three hundred for stay to stay and four hundred for the community thing. Any any comments? <coughs> Yeah, my only kind of state of stay is that um, I, I have to understand the objective of it, but it's during peak weekend uh, in a month where probably most of our lodging sold out already. So we, we've already talked about that, and the yeah. state said that they have a lot of participants that don't stay. They'll stay with family and friends. Oh, they'll come okay. up and or they'll stay and you know they'll go to White River. Does it encourage people that are already staying with us to do? Yeah, something? we can we can definitely do that. Okay. We, we'll definitely be getting information yeah. about. It. John, not to prolong the meeting, but John, I, I move that we approve the $700 request, by the way. Uh, I second. So, John, I've been talking about the, the state of state weekend, and does it by itself actually move the needle in terms of people that might move to the area? I don't know that it does, but uh, it does actually give us some training as to how can we leverage what the state has already done to prove we'll out as to what works. We'll get trained. Uh, we as a community and the people that participate in the state of state because this requires members from the business community and the community to actually be available to meet with people to talk about well what's the school like what's this like and we've long talked about the ambassador program right. uh, and this is what it, this becomes but you could actually learn from what the state has learned and actually scale it so that when there's an event like the Cover Bridges Half Marathon or there's a big huge bike ride or that type of stuff that you can set up to do it again uh, and say okay let's put up a tent I was sorry that we didn't have a, a tent up at Bookstock this weekend you know about we should you know be talking to people about what would it be like to live here yeah. and that kind of stuff so we can learn from what they do what does do handouts work I don't know they'll they know uh, so we can kind of learn from them. Yeah. So it's like the old learn to read bus or whatever. Remember that the uh, oh, old yeah. program bus went yeah. around different places and different it's events and, and t taught everybody I mean, t taught them how to read and but you're teaching people about the state. That'd yeah. Be kind of fun. yeah. And this we had the idea of Burma Shave ads, uh, Burma Shave type signs so, you know along a running course or on a bike yeah. route or that kind of stuff. You know. Live here. If you, if you lived here, you'd be home by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would. Right. So, oh, come on. Anyway. Okay, yeah. so, so there's was been a mo moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion on the request for 700? Yeah, right there at the, sorry. Uh, any, any further discussion? Uh, I, I, just to, for the record, I'm not, it doesn't have to be recorded in the minutes, but I, the, the 400 or 500, $400, I guess now, for this event seems like we're sort of bypassing the normal process for events, but it's such a small amount, and I, it's, not, it's not really, I don't know that it's really worth uh, Worth debating, so uh, I'll, I'll vote. So, any if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, next is the select board policy. Sorry, the eyes have it. Uh, select board policy on attendance. Um, I, I will circulate to all of you the memo that the select board passed 
and Mary, if I get this wrong, or Sally, because you're both also recipients of this for your other roles, you can correct me. Um, and I apologize, I could not find it for some reason. Um, but what it basically says is that uh, there's an expectation. It lays out expectations for committee members, for us, the VDRB. Every, everybody is, you know, all, all the boards of ta in town that are appointed by the select board. And the expectation, along with a whole series of things that are everyone will agree to, you know, no conflict of, you know, you're not, no corruption and a conflict of interest, whatever, is a expectation that you will attend 80% of the meetings that you um, are supposed to attend, and that if after, and that the chair of the committee will keep attendance records, and that if after a year, I believe is the number, after a year, if the attendance is falling short of that, then you will be expected to step aside, I think is the way the memo says it's, so. I think this has actually an important connection to which of the plans we pick. Since the subcommittees, I think we've already discussed the fact that the subcommittees of the EDC are public bodies, uh, are subject to the public, uh, the open meeting law. Open meeting law. Mm -hmm. <coughs> which is not related to attendance, <coughs> but anyway, my point is that I think, so, 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 um, I guess that actually is irrelevant. So it's been posted it, on town. Yeah, site. sorry, I'm going to ignore that comment. Okay. It's, 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 yeah. no, I, I think it has an effect on whether or not we pick plan A or plan B or how we, how we strike it because it creates a certain number of meetings and if we do that, we have to commit to 80% 80, 80 attendance or suffer the consequences. Joe? Can I ask Mary a question? When this policy was uh, uh, adopted or, or created, was there discussion about phoning? Was that count? Um, phoning into a meeting. Phoning, yeah, phoning, yeah, phoning, phoning, phoning into a meeting is acceptable. It is acceptable. Absolutely. Um, there are some criteria. Um, we're still working on some wording and some minor changes to that policy, so it is not completely in effect yet. Okay. But. Um, oh, it's not. It has been signed yet. Okay. Because we're waiting for some wording to come back. Okay. But um, pretty much, and attendance is important. So I've heard, I've heard some comments from select board members, <coughs> member, basically, you know, feeling that in the past at the subcommittee level, the EDC hasn't had the right attendance, and I think now we're talking about creating more subcommittees and so forth. So I think we need to take this attendance issue into account next month. You all need to reflect on it and think about the frequency of meetings that, you know, and I think that may push us more towards, you know, wherever we draw the line between A and B, right, it's gonna push us a little bit to more towards B. So, much as I hate to, I just can't stop. You gave him a head start, though. What? You sure. gave him a head start, yeah. you gave him a platform to work from. Yeah, yeah. And I, I did a good job of presenting your idea, didn't I? Thank you very much. Yeah, I just wanna make sure. No, I, 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 it is a good idea. Okay, um, the last is uh, election of vice chair, which we <coughs> neglected to do in the past, so, um, and I, I'll be honest, I would like to, personally, I would like to postpone this. I, I don't care. But the way I would like to do it is to find out if any of you privately would like to do it, because I feel like wanting to do it is the most important thing to doing it well. And, and you know, if someone says, well, Mary should be it, then we're all gonna say, oh, of course Mary should be right, it. Let's go Mary in now. So, <laughs> because we, you know, because we don't want to say post. So, yeah. so would anyone be, I don't think we're at major risk if we don't have it for one more month, but I, I meant this past month to just ask each of you, are you interested, are you excited about it? And if someone is, then I think that's who we should nominate. But I wanted to have the discussion privately. I, I don't feel strongly about it, but that's my suggestion. Is anyone, is everyone okay with that? Yeah, I am. Uh, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, I think we're, oh, sorry, I actually, Okay, uh, any, is there, I have two very small items to mention that are new business. Does anyone have anything else first before? Just one, on new business. Go ahead. Uh, new business, I had sent an email um, about downtown designation, about the state of Vermont, the Agency of Commerce Community Development. Community Development is interested in having discussion with Woodstock again about whether or not it wants to be a designated downtown. This is a discussion we had a number of months ago. And Beth said, yes, we've never really resolved that. We've talked about it, we dumped it, we talked about it. Um, and so they're very interested in having a conversation with us again as to what the benefits are of Woodstock becoming a designated downtown. And so we have to understand what that means. There are some benefits in terms of eligibility for tax credit financing and transportation financing. 
Um, but other than that, it, it does require a full-time position uh, within a downtown development organization. Paid position? Paid position. Um, and so it's, it could feather into the whole visioning process about what do we look like uh, and how do we manage it. So it's really interesting to think about that. So anyway, I bring that up as, uh, and I'm sorry Beth is gone. Uh, she was on the email, but as a way to get people from the town, the village, EDC and the chamber at least together talking about this. Yeah, we started. I think we started talking about it uh, initially in, in in the light of trying to uh, find out where we get funding for different things, and that came up. And it's one of the suggestions we made. Oh gosh, much ago, but it get overshadowed by all this bump out stuff. <laughs> and Charlie, else. Charlie, something uh, the governor said <coughs> made me ask this question. He talked about. Region regions thinking of Vermont as regions rather than s towns because the towns are so small. Even the regions are small, but the towns are so small. Is it possible to have a downtown designation committee for seven towns? No, it has to be not, not the way the law is structured okay. right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else on that? No. Nope. Okay. I have two quick things. One is uh, Gary Smith sent me a letter. I'll send it around to you. Uh, the Woodstock Pharmacy is for sale. It has been for. I guess the last three years, he's been trying to sell it to a non-CVS, you know, non-national chain. Um, he hasn't had any success. He's now going to a regional broker, which I think he thinks, and I have no reason to doubt him, increases the likelihood that the person, that the in entity who will buy it is a national or a region, big regional chain. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, he then feels, again, I have no reason to doubt him, that the pattern of acquisition. What happens is the regional chain signs a lease with the building for, for a five-year lease. During that period of time, they get their operations going. Then after five years, mm -hmm. they move to, you know, a mile and a half outside of the center where, or three miles out of the center where people can go by car and they abandon the buildings in, in mm -hmm. the downtown core. And so it would be better for the town if we could, you know, if, if we didn't, if that didn't happen to us. And so he's just wondering from an EDC point, if he's not asking for funding or anything, maybe can we use our network and so forth to try to help. And so this seems to me to be one of those issues that under the fourth committee, the business environment and so forth, that that's the kind of, it's, it's almost an ambassador program for businesses, um, that, that that committee would start to think about something like this. They would also presumably think about Welch's hardware building and what kind of thing we would want to get in that and those kinds of issues. So I just bring this up as just FYI. I think, I think it's, very, very important. I mean, having that store empty is yeah. akin to having Bentley's empty, mm -hmm. as long as it has been. I right. mean, that, that's, you can't drive into town or walk into right. town without passing through one of those stores. It's very important. So that fourth committee, I think, has immediately on their agenda something to think about these yeah. kinds of issues. I just wish I knew a, a really good way to right. strongly support, yeah. you know, somebody other than the chain being in there. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> is there yeah, and you, you, you know, you got to realize that there's already a precedent in town of chain stores in, in our in our immediate region. So mm -hmm. and that's and that's. I mean, if you look at Manchester, Vermont, um, you know, it took a while to figure out that they had the outlet stores, and then one hotel puts a brand on it, so all of a sudden you've got three brands in one street that are that are are very large brands. And that just folded into a bunch of other things coming in, and it just it just kept going like this. Mm -hmm. Santa, we're just getting that way too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So the question is: Is he selling the real estate or just the business? It, uh, it wasn't clear to me, and I think it's a very important question with respect to the housing committee. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, it wasn't it wasn't clear, and I actually asked him if he would split if he was willing to split the split the store. Well, because it's two buildings, and one of them is yeah. one the upstairs of one of them is empty. Oh. Really? Yeah. He's the said, upstairs back? Uh, I, uh, I don't know. Anyway, the point is it was another 5 Central Street type situation where there yep. was essentially underutilized space right on Main Street on the second floor. So anyway, that's just FYI. Yeah. I, I don't know where. Yeah. No, no, no. That's okay. That's okay. The, the last thing. Yeah, exactly. The, the other thing to mention is that when the governor was here and Michael Sherling, is that his name? Yes. The Commerce Secretary or Director or Secretary, Secretary um, uh, was talking about a whole series of initiatives that the state is doing, and they're working, not surprisingly, on the same basic kind of issues that we're working on. You know, how do you get tourists to come in, and how do you expand housing, et cetera, et cetera. And they were talking about all these things that because, I mean, 
they're small, but we're tiny, and so they have more resources than we do. And he's, in particular, what piqued my interest is he talked about a website program where they can, they can do digital advertising, and then they can track whether the person is actually physically in Vermont, because they get information, I guess, from Android or from Apple, or both, as to where the phone is, if you allow that. So that struck me that we ought to send a delegation of whoever wants to go, and we can take people from the community as well, and I asked him, would you please host us for a half a day? We'll come up to Montpelier and set up meetings with us for the different groups in the state government that are doing the kind of things we're doing. And they'll just show us what they're doing. And at a minimum, we'll get some good ideas and maybe we can leverage some of the technology or, or go, you know, what, whatever. And he yeah. said, that's great. He wants to kind of set that up. So, uh, sure. if, so is that, are you going to be the point person? I'll, I'll, I'll be the point person logistically. And what I'll do is, yes. you know, I, I, won't, I won't wait for all eight of us to be available but I'll try to set up some options. We'll just maximize it. Is everyone okay that we, I'm imagining half of us might go and we can invite people to the community to already come? put my name out there toward them as go. Okay. Some yeah. round table stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So I just wanted to FYI. That's great. Okay. Um, I have one other. Yeah, go ahead. We have an opening on this board. What, do we, what historically do we do about it other than it, I, it's posted somewhere? Is it, is it a formally, I'll just step in here, because I don't know if the select board knows that there is yeah. a vacancy. You, you appointed Barry to, a, to an extension to an that extension ended until in June. June. Right. And, and it, we, there is a vacancy. That I've well, confirmed I know, that. Yeah. I know, but I don't know if the select board has, the, I did not want to make the decision. Right, I was with this. I did not emphasize this point when right. I went to the select board last right. month, so I apologize. What do I need to do, or we need to do, to get you to fill it? All right. So there is a vacancy. Right. Um, you have, can have nine, is it? Right. Yes. Have eight. Um, and as I count, I always count Sally, but of course she's your administrator. She's a pro. Um, do you have? Yes. Yeah, see, there's nine right. up there, but you're right. one of them. Do you have someone that you're interested in? Someone who's come to you now? Not that yet, we but, but we have also haven't solicited. So, right. so you have it, okay. Right. So, um, but I think we would like it tonight. When <laughs> yeah. you come we to the... Tonight, so we're not solicited, but we may well, well, yeah. Um, if you have someone, uh, you should come to the select board. I know that they will probably try to advertise it again yeah. in order to have yeah, a field for, to choose from. Right. Why don't we just say that, um, that if any of you have any suggestions, could you please give it some thought and let me or Sally know and we'll share it with the rest of you. You know, we'll share it with everybody so that we can get feedback. Well, as well. To have a suggestion is have somebody approach us and say there's some interests so you can pass it on to you and that, and that way it would go. It could, it could be that, but if any of you think that, you know, we really ought to get X would be yeah. a good person, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Either way. But, but then, and so I'll come you to this. It, well, you at the next meeting of the select, select board, I'll bring board this up. will have to advertise. I'm right. sure that they will elect to do that. Yeah. And um, thereafter, we'll arrange for yeah. interviews. And if it's someone that you people have already spoken with, yeah. we'll be sure that they come to a meeting. Right. You can or don't have to be present. And it goes from there. Right. And if you have a recommendation, that's all we, we can have. make it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's if we have any recommendations, let's. But make John, them. did you send around the, the select board policy on attendance? Because I believe I mean, didn't hear you. The select board policy on attendance uh -huh. also has a section on board appointments. Yeah. So maybe um, I have a copy somewhere. Could, could you send it around to the I'll group? It I apologize. I, I, I tried to do it this afternoon. I couldn't yeah, find I, it. I can't find mine that quickly, but I have it here. Yeah. It was it was a while ago that you we. Know. Well, I circulated it, and then it kind of, when we adopted the dangerous buildings ordinance, um, we had that that day and decided to change some wording in a couple areas, so it was not complete. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I have one question before we yeah. adjourn. Is, is it my responsibility now to... Uh, put out an RFP for a consultant for Deagle or something? Um, let's take this off, I think, let's take this offline because I th it's a, the whole commission doesn't have to, I only I just don't, time know, I yeah, I, I, I don't know, I, I need to think it, need to think it through, I think we have to think through the timing yeah. and, and 
Okay. Just try to figure out what the best, you know, the yeah. revitalization subcommittee needs to think through what the best strategy is because we denied this motion. So, yeah. But I don't think, let's not have a, I, it's not that. I, I just don't want to know, should I, if, I mean, if that's what I'm uh, to do, uh, th yeah. that's my job, I'll get started on it tomorrow. If not, yeah. Um, I think, I mean, it, it, maybe we can just get a sense of the group. Does everyone agree that the planning? That, that, that as a next step, particularly given the discussion tonight and so forth, that a next step would be a modest cost planning, that planning process that gets some draw, get, gets drawings that can be reviewed and approved and gets input from the community, or is that not what we think well, the next the, step the, should the be? The whole list that you had. Yeah, right, exactly. The, the, does everyone, if we just add to that list the amendments and the competitive bids, is that what we think is next for the Teagles Landing project? Yeah. Yes. And, and, yes. and tomorrow's Great. Yeah. Right. So then, then I would well, take that well, vote. Great for what? Going out and just uh, and starting. Uh, that means that I have to approach a town manager. Is that no. how you do it? Yeah. No. 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 Do you think yes or no? So. When we wrote, when we wrote um, some of the RFPs that I wrote for the East End, we one of them I know we wrote before it was approved for EDC. Yeah, but who funding. paid for that? <coughs> What I'm saying is that we wrote the RFPs before it was approved for funding, and in the RFP it said this. This grant or this amount of money is um, contingent on the approval of the EDC. Well, when when we uh, looked for an RFP for the consultant that uh, that ultimately wound up with Dubois and Kane, mm -hmm. we had to go through Phil. Oh, I, we we didn't for these. So that that's why I'm asking the question. Well, there was always a lack of clarity, and there was some yeah discomfort for some. I yeah. think Mary won for the East End grant, for instance, like, what do I do? Do I give it to the town manager? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. But, but I, the contract, I was, I the contract was with the town, but the we went, we went through, We went through Phil, and Phil said, yeah, okay, I'll. Well, I think the reason, Joe, if I recall, I think the reason we went through the town was because they were the one who, they were posting it for us on the town website. I think that that's why, that's why we went that route. In a lot of cases, also the town um, is the he has to sign for the grant and that kind right. of thing. Is well, why don't they hold the green bonds and see how it goes? Uh, okay, well, I mean, Sal I think Sally probably can tell. I mean, if, if well, that's fine. You, if you want to confirm it, yeah, but I, I think, think Sally should, is I, the most knowledgeable. Because I don't want to go through this again. You know? Yeah. Say, oh, you didn't do it right. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's go through well, the Well, I do think that the RFP, I do think perhaps the hardest, most difficult part is not who issues it, but, but that we write an RFP. Yeah, it's different exactly. than just going out and getting three bids. Yeah. I mean, I've sort of put these yeah. bullet points up. It's pretty easy. It, what given yeah. what we've got plus yeah. the amendments, it's pretty easy. Yeah. But They're pretty easy. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. All right. Can I just, uh, as we, well, uh, I guess before we adjourn, I, so I know that this, the way that, that this meeting went and partly the way that I let it although it was hard, it's hard to control, is different than we've done in the past. And I realize that it's a burden on us to have allow all of these comments um, at times. I mean, uh, on the other hand, there is, uh, Roger, I think, hit the nail on the head, and, and he was being charitable. It's not that people are going to start talking about taking the money back. They're talking about taking the money back now. It's not the it's, it's the that's the fringe maybe, but but there's there's way too much noise and in the process. And so I, the only I'm, I am very willing to change how we run the meetings. I just want to tell you that I'm aware that it's uncomfortable to be doing this. And some of you, you know, are probably sitting here going, you know. <coughs> John, I just I, cut the conversation. It was uncomfortable, but I think it was totally necessary. I think you did the right thing. Uh, okay, I just yeah, I, yeah, no, I think it went fine. I, okay, yeah. and just going forward, I just want to say that I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to allow more conversation than it, it than maybe it, it'll be a little bit less efficient. I, what I'd like to do, and I'm bad at this, but it's I'm only 50. I actually thought we would finish at nine. I know that's at no, no, Is our EDC meetings from seven to nine mm -hmm. acceptable? We once had one for, at 10, which I realize is unacceptable. But is 7 to 9 okay, or do we want to shoot for 7 to 8.30? No, no, 9 to 9.30. It's expected 7 to 9 for 9. Okay, and what I'll do is, is try to set an agenda at the end at 8.30, and then I'll be off by half an hour, because I'm always off by half an hour. <laughs> That's 9 o'clock, though. That's 9 o'clock. Okay. So, all right, good. So, can we have, is, you have, should we adjourn, or do you want to make a comment? I, I, I didn't want to make a comment. Okay, go ahead. I think about the comment I want to make. <laughs> Let's see. 
Oh, that's what is that? Uh, ah, uh, <laughs> this is what happens after nine o'clock. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, the, the comment, the uh, <coughs> people talking. You have some people that repeat the same thing yeah. in different ways, and and, and I think that's where we kind of we we have to grab that and say, okay, that's fine. That's been yeah. mentioned. Thank you for saying that again. I, we've got time for, and yeah, I think you always you set a timeline. It's out there in advance. We've got time for two more questions. I'm taking two more questions, and I got one, two here. We're gonna go and wrap it up um, when when you feel like there's enough discussion on. Uh, uh, you know, I was almost gonna say something. I almost make an announcement there that. We had a huge crowd and say, hey, it's great to see you all here because typically we have three to five people right. here and the same people are always here. And if you guys are very concerned, and as you, you seem to all come for here for one thing. Mm -hmm. And it would be great for you to come for all the things we're right. talking about because you're only going to come back when it's something you're not comfortable with. But right. if you come here and help us, support us. And, you know, I think when you got a big audience, it's nice to just announce that. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll send something out on the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not tomorrow morning, but you know, yeah. take a day or two. Thank you, Yeah. I mean, the communication is uh, um, the communication yeah. uh, that's out there. I mean, it's pretty strong. It's just people just aren't in, yeah. well in touch with things. Well, and, then, and as a citizen, it's part of your responsibility yeah. to go and seek that. Go to the right. town site and figure out what's going on. And that. I think we probably should have said something like yeah. that. Yeah, well, we did a little bit. I thought yeah. you guys collectively, I, mean, we I thought we were responding nicely. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, the comments that, you know, we should end this now, and, I, and uh, that um, the $26,000 was wasted money. Yeah. I mean, well, you responded well. Yeah, you did a great okay. job. Right. Yeah. Can we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? second? All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it.